Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. Some breaking news. Wow! Breaking news. Yeah. The Marlies have acquired a new defenseman. <laughs> what did they give up? How many first round picks, Jesse Blake? Nothing. What? 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 They they gave him nothing. He's just they just got him on loan. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so this so, is interesting. Who is, is it Eric Gusta Branson, man? Eric Alex. Tell me about Gabudskin. Gabudskin. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have? <laughs> the, the Toronto oh, let me find the tweet. I didn't know you were going to start off with well, this. Well, how could you not? Yeah, I thought he was going to go with Sergi Baca. Uh, yeah, so he's I like, the Marley's sure. got a guy I, I, I thought this was a hockey show. I had Terrence Sometimes. Ross's tweet taking Toronto up on my screen, and now you want me to switch back to the damn Marley's? I was saying this is a huge loss for Toronto sports because we lost Amber Rose. Are they're they not together anymore. Yeah, no, okay, Adam said that. Together. I, 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 when, I, when was that? While. Oh, He's man. For some reason, I thought Whatever. it was Lou Reed that was with Amber Rose, and I guess I got Lou that mixed. Lou Reed? Yeah, not Lou, Lou Reed. Williams. <laughs> Lou Williams. Lou Reed. <laughs> Posthumously, Lou Reed. See, here's Take what happens. walk on the wild side, literally. <laughs> here's what happens. Sometimes I come in, and I'm like, oh, oh, Adam better have it today, or Jesse better have it today. And I walked in, quickly evaluated, and went, all three of us got nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. So this show is going to be interesting. It's called an adventure. Ah, yes. All right, so, so let's start from the Marlies. Who do we... No, no, Amber Rose. <laughs> and Lou Reed. Do, so Lou Williams ever dated Amber Rose? L- no, no. Oh, okay. Lou, right, Lou Williams a- has two girlfriends. Uh, oh, that's probably that was the story, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. 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 More like two Williams. Oh. oh. Uh-huh. All right, all right. I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. Transaction. The Toronto Marlies have acquired R.D., right defenseman, Alex Goodbranson, on loan from the Minnesota Wild. And the reason this is interesting is from the Minnesota Wild. So this wasn't an AHL transaction. This wasn't one AHL team trading with another, which you can do. Uh, Kyle Dubas would be in charge of that because he is the Toronto Marlies GM. This is the Minnesota Wild NHL team loaning a player that they have under NHL contract to the Marlies. Kind of like what the Marlies did with Matt Fratton last year and then took him back. <laughs> yeah. Or never gave him up. So what would be the reason for something like this? Because I don't know if we've ever seen this before. Well, like it makes the Marlies better and it probably gives him ice time. But other than that, it might not give him ice time because the Marlies like they just acquired unless there's an injury I'm unaware of um, as many injuries as they have up front. I think it's starting to get crowded at the back. They just got Frank Carrado, who I think is a right D. Uh This might have been a matter of uh, the Minnesota farm team. I I don't remember who they are. Deciding they don't have space for this guy and approaching, I don't know, just going around. Anyone want a guy? Approaching the Marlies and they said, okay, fine. Sure, no problem. I, I having Jesse bring up Minnesota's cap friendly. Because my question, if, if, if a player is on loan, and I don't know the answer to this, hard to know. Does if, if they are on loan, you know how you have a maximum of 50 contracts? Mm. Does that contract... Oh, then man. transfer to the team he's on loan to for that moment, giving Minnesota more chance to build up for I, the playoffs. No, I think he would still... Well, Jesse found him on Minnesota's cap-friendly page. Yes, he's still there, and they have 47 of 50 contracts. Okay, I gotta, I gotta okay. think he stays there. Gotta think oh. he stays. And well, the, yeah, yeah. I just thought yeah. it might be an yeah. idea, you know, because I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities. Although you don't hear much in the way of rumors from from Minnesota um, that you know they would load up because they're doing extraordinarily well very quietly you would think so there's been a couple of rumblings with the Leafs I don't know I don't know I mean, what's like going the on Leafs there. in Minnesota no 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 oh, no like, I'm just talking about Minnesota it's it's such a weird trade deadline mm-hmm. like everyone every year there's a move like sometimes two three weeks out from the deadline and that's like all right okay that everyone sets well, the price last year I think it was Dion. Yeah, yeah, that was ahead of the deadline, and that was huge. That was an enormous deal. Um, but it kind of sets the price. Mm-hmm. And even even that, like, there was, there was too many uh, long-term factors there for it to really be setting the price for the deadline. A, a couple other moves happened. Haven't seen that this year. No, not yet. I'm trying to think of what the last trade in the NHL was. Peter Holland's got to be one of the more recent ones. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Now, nobody's even really making waiver claims except for the Leafs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, huh? really. Um, now, 
I guess since we're on the trop, to, uh, the topic of, of trading, because I, w- I do want to talk about the Leafs in Buffalo on Saturday, and maybe we'll save that for the second segment. Um, the first place Montreal Canadiens could make a huge trade and could fire their head coach. And again, I say first place in the Atlantic, first place Montreal Canadiens could fire their head coach. How are we in this situation? That would definitely, like how, it's funny that people are talking about this so casually. Um, and like, would this, would this not be far more outrageous than the Gerard Gallant firing? Yes. It would have to be, right? But it's almost been something, at least in our circle, that we've sort of expected and would have recommended maybe last year. Uh, and maybe even the year before, knowing what we know, and especially what Andrew Berkshire has written about time and time and time again, the, the type of hockey Montreal is playing uh, is truly... Uh, and you just see so many things wow. creeping back in. Alex Galchenyuk, putting him back on the wing. What's going on there? And, and I think I think they hit a bit of a blip, but they had so many injuries. And the thought was, you know what, they're really holding the fort. At least they're at least playing decently with all these injuries. Just wait till they start getting these guys back when they got them back. And they're still not. And they're still not very good. And Carey Price does not look like he's recovering. Montreal Can, might be in a little bit of trouble. Does it not seem to you like, you know, Montreal ha- certainly has talent, big talent. Totally. Um, does not seem to you like every single, or recently anyway, I guess the last two years, I can't remember further back than that. Um, (laughs) There seems to be a negative vibe coming out of that dressing room a lot. There's always a big problem. You know, last year, the lightning rod and the last couple of years was PK. But there just seems to be like a, you know, you want to believe that they can do it, especially because Carey Price is their goalie. And and even a guy like Carey Price is going to have down spots throughout the year. But there always seems to be a very negative sort of dark feeling from that dressing room. Am I the only one that feels that way? Yeah, and you know what? PK hasn't had the most awesome season either. And that's been injury-filled as well. But you got to look and go, wasn't, wasn't trading him supposed to fix all this? It was supposed to get rid of the distraction. That was that was the line at the time was, well, now Montreal's got rid of the main distraction, the guy that didn't put the team first. And here we are, Valentine's Day 2017. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I'll be your Valentine. And we're talking about the Habs firing their head coach again. And we're talking about how they're collapsing again. And we're talking about how they're in a very similar position to what, where they were last year. Mm-hmm. Not as extreme. W- what is it? I'm certainly not going to put it all on Shea Weber. But if you didn't fix the problem... I think Shea Weber, unfortunately, is in the crossfire in this one because he didn't really choose any of this. I know he no, waved his uh, no movement. No, uh, 100%. Yeah. He, out of any, everyone involved in all that shenanigans, I feel the worst for. But if you don't solve the problems that you were trying to solve, now all you got is that Weber contract for a long time. Mm-hmm. Very long time. Mm-hmm. Subban's is long too, but this Weber one is long. But and Subban's takes him still through his prime, which he is just entering. Which was the argument the entire time, and everyone's like, whenever Weber scored a goal, everyone's like, "See, Norris." That was never Norris. the argument. The argument, like I think Berkshire even said, "Yeah, I could see Weber scoring like 15 goals." It's a goal scoring defenseman, big goals in the power play, but if the Habs don't succeed in this little window. And Weber starts to get a little older every year. That's kind of how time works. It's linear. What happens? What happens? Now, I'll tell you what happens because it's the Canadians. Tyrion doesn't get fired and they acquire Matt Duchesne somehow. Well, and we'll get to that in a second. It just seems like with Montreal, they have a real issue with diagnosing their own problems. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. think of all the moves they've made in the last two and a half, three years. They've, they've made a few. Right? There's been some real, like, some moves there. A lot of like, deck chair moves, go, though. Yeah, yeah, but but that's kind of the problem, right? Mm. I mean, like, it goes back to Michelle Terrian's reliance on Douglas Murray and when he was well past his prime. Oh, boy. I remember um, that. And he, and he was going to be, he was supposed to, he was put in situations that you would put a guy in who could solve your problems, and he ended up creating them. And that's not Douglas Murray's fault. He was used incorrectly. And basically swapping Andrew Shaw and Lars Eller, which looked great for a bit, and then Shaw continued to go nuts. Eller finally figured out how to play on the Washington Capitals. And, yeah, and that's that's kind of the part for me that it just seems like every move that they make, dead chair moves, 
or the the Subban move, which still to to this day doesn't doesn't compute with me. I don't get it, and. I feel like It'd be weird if both teams miss the playoffs. I, I don't think that's going to no, happen. I, don't I still think, so think the Habs make it. Mm. I feel like but, they're ignoring the major issues, and I feel like what's the major issue though? I think I think there's now. I think there's many. You think it's oh, many? Has, is it just Carey Price going cold? I have a stats. Well, oh, yeah, last... it is. But that's the point: is that the team should be able to weather that. I have his stats in his last 14 games, and he has an 894 save percentage. Woo! With four wins, nine losses, and one tie. In his first 29 games, it was 930 save percentage, 20 wins, five losses, four ties. Now, we live and so, die. Wow. Every team lives and dies by their goaltending. Goal goal You're right. Yeah. However, and it might, I'm going to argue that uh, uh, they <laughs> live and die by his goaltending more than most first place teams. Boy, that's. Bad, Isn't that though. right? Am I am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. But like, it'd be That's one bad. thing. You know what? If Price right now over the last stretch, let's say was sporting a nine ten, let's say a nine oh eight, below league average, but still NHL like. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, and it's amazing that I'm talking about Carey Price in this context. I, I think it's a different conversation. It's you know what? He's still playing at least decently, and the Habs can't pull it together. That's brutal. However, okay, so eight ninety four. Consider this. What, but think about the way the Habs play defense. Does that not accentuate that number? Does that not make it worse? Well, see, because I feel like a system, whatever system you're playing, does have an effect. Now, I'm not saying that Carey Price hasn't been uh, not good because he's been <laughs> not good. But is that eight? What is it? Eight ninety four. Eight ninety four. If that, eight, what if that eight ninety four? If you played a different system, all of a sudden becomes a nine. Yeah, maybe, and yeah. I don't know. That's it. That's it's entirely a, possible. I'm sure the analytics people is could actually. Is nine hundred even acceptable? No, but, but over a stretch. Over a stretch. You can, you can have a cold games. stretch. Yeah, that's a pretty. That's long a long stretch, stretch. Yeah. I don't which know. tells me it's got to be more than him. And it's a long yeah. stretch for Price. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's the style of hockey hockey that they're playing. I think we saw it last year without him. Um, and you know they they did do quite well the season before. There's no question. It's just I I. You know, mm. you know, mm. with Montreal. Now he'll come out of this like Lundqvist did. He'll come out of it. Yeah, it's uh, you know what? That's actually a pretty good comparison. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and Lundqvist had Ranta behind him. I think Montoya is a fine backup. Mm-hmm. Um, now, so I wrote a trade tree today. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. Definitely. But I, I started it with, um, if you throw a punch, you might win the fight. Or no, if you throw a punch and it lands, you might win the fight. If you throw a punch and it misses, that's when you're most vulnerable. Are the Habs in a position where they have to throw a punch? Because what we talk about a lot in this show is what are teams? We get, what is Identity. What are the Vancouver Canucks? We ranted about it for a long time. Are they rebuilding? Are they a playoff team? What, what are they and trying still to don't do? Know. The Habs are a little bit of a win now scenario, aren't they? Well, they've put themselves in that. Their window could have been, in my my view, a lot longer. A lot longer. They're not a tremendously old team. They're not. They're really not. They could, especially if they get Duchesne, that answers the Thomas Buchanan's question a little bit. You got a lot of guys kind of entering their prime and in their prime. Do you think... They could, they could be fine for a little while. Because they, they are one of the people that are, and they got price. That, that are in on Duchesne. <laughs> Is that a Galch for Duchesne, or is that a Placanic and... No, there's no way. Because Galch is, he's up. Right? There's and no he's way. he's going to get paid a lot of money. There's no way they trade him. Come on. I don't Elliot think they Freeman would... brought it up in 30 Thoughts. What What did he say exactly? Because he dropped that, that thing five minutes before. By the way, uh, speaking of Friedman, you were saying... Um, uh, you, you were saying something about waivers. No one's claiming anyone off waivers. Uh, Michael Russo out of Minnesota says, Center Tyler Grauvach has cleared waivers, and Elliot Friedman tweeted, I'm surprised at that one. Hmm. I wonder if the Leafs would have liked him as a depth center. Maybe they couldn't get him. Yeah, just couldn't fit him. Um, we don't need everybody off waivers. <laughs> but, they, but they've said they want a depth Let center. Let me read though. number one of Elliot's 30 thoughts. I would like to stress that this is my opinion. So this is key, okay? It's his opinion. By the way, okay, before we get into that, actually, no, 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 trust me, trust yeah, me, it's related. Yeah, this is important. I know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it on the weekend. Yeah, Friedman's yeah. been getting pissed off at people quoting him oh, and saying, on there's, radio there's a shows. reason he wrote that. Oh. It's, it's a little sly, yeah. 
Yeah, and I and I saw a lot of people going, "Well, come on, Fridge, what do you expect?" Listen, he's a reporter, and and I even said on TV sometimes when he throws an idea out there, he makes sure to he puts a little smile on and he articulates. Look, this is just my opinion. This is just a theory I have. Okay, it's not a report. But then he says stuff on the radio and a little bit more context is taken away when you can't see his face. And then you just read it in print and all of a sudden it's this report. And there sure are a lot of sports sites that it, that used to be a little bit more legitimate than they are that are taking reports from him and other, yeah. other major hockey people and aggregating them. And misquoting them. So now you got you, Friedman's like a scared comedian going, look, now look, I don't want to offend anyone. And then starting his joke. So how did he start that thought? I don't want to offend anyone, but this is my opinion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he quoted um, what someone. Is, sorry, direct, he quoted somebody directly on Twitter who was taking one of his quotes from the radio and being like, "Hey, Elliot Freeman reports this." And he's like, "No, no, I was just saying this would be cool to see. It's it, not a report." It's and I mean, yeah. to annoy Elliot Friedman, you really you gotta think you're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. guy's got a that guy's got a pretty long fuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, pretty patient man. So. Knowing that, I would like to stress this is my opinion. In what is going to be an intense week for Montreal GM Mark Bergevin, my sense is his biggest looming decision concerns Alex Galchenyuk. The shuffling between center and right wing uh, show a player and an organization still struggling to find the right fit. Galch is up. Uh, Galchik's, Galchenyuk's contract is up. He's two years away from unrestricted free agency and eligible for arbitration this summer. Many of his peers are getting long-term deals in the 6 to $7 million range. With 30 goals last season and 29 points in 37 games this year, he's going to get paid. Bergevin could wait until the end of the season to address this, but, one, but more than one NHL exec says the Canadians have a lot of moving pieces that's a quote right now. Undoubtedly, he, Bergevin, is trying to move money in the David DeHarnay, Thomas, Thomas Blacanic vein. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's certainly a chance something bigger happens. Matt Duchesne may be older, but he is under contract for two more seasons at $6 million per. Bergevin is trying to sign Radulov with Carey Price and Patch Ready to come. That's a lot of contracts. Oh, my God. If you think, uh, if you think you can have one more established, if you can think you can have a more established Duchesne at a potentially lower number for the next two years than Galchenyuk, does Montreal do it? That's why I bring that up. Here, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting thought. I'm not sure how they pull this off, but here would be a really interesting all-in move. Imagine Montreal somehow just clears the cupboard. Just screw it. Michael L- McCarron, Leroy Jenkins, and yeah, maybe get rid of Michael McCarron. Uh, I, I don't know what it's going to take, but you find a way to get Matt Duchesne, and you find a way to get Shattenkirk. And I'm not throwing Shattenkirk in there just to throw him in there because everyone throws Shattenkirk into every trade rumor. But imagine now you got Shea Weber and Shattenkirk in front of Carey Price, who I got to assume is going to return to Carey Price form. That's pretty scary. All of a That's sudden, scary. all of a sudden, you got a team that looks pretty good, I think. And you've addressed two of the positions that are the most expensive and hardest to address center, a top six center, especially, and a top two D. If Mark Bergevin pulls that off, he'll be a god in Montreal. Um, At what cost? M- McCarron's it, gone. Oh, that, yeah. That's gone. Your first, your first rounder for this and next, probably gone too. You got to look at, uh, I would say to pull that off, because you need two of, take your choice, Chucky, uh, Sergachev, and McCarron. And uh, Gouch, probably. He's Chucky. Oh, he's Chucky. Oh, Sorry, I, I, I don't know why I called him Chucky. I'm not a Habs fan. I mean, you are. You should know that. Oh, I guess I should. I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Man, when I tweeted that picture of you and Celine Dion at the Grammys, which we will get to, everyone's like, oh, look at these two French Canadians. He's having a great time. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, and you know what? Montreal should go for it. They absolutely should go I'm for it. I'm kind of on team go for it. Yeah. Because I least, like to be entertained. At least be on it, right? Be on something. And and I think Mark Bergevin knows that. He's not afraid to make moves. If there's any GM in the in the league now who is not afraid to make moves, it's Mark Bergevin. Um, and he would rather try and fail than not try, which I have to say, that is a problem, I think, in the NHL right now. Like Stan Bowman's another guy who doesn't who who will try. 
Mm-hmm. Jim They'll Rutherford, try. another guy who will try and look at how they, how they've done. Yeah, Shovel Day Off uses the metal the meta pro, metapod approach. That's right. Just harden, <laughs> and, harden, harden, and, harden. And Lombardi's another guy too in L.A. Yeah. You know those guys go for it, and they win, and it costs them. It co- it costs Chicago every single year, but look at Chicago. Now I'm not saying Montreal is Chicago, but look at what they've done. Do any one of us think that Chicago? Um, got a fair deal for Antoine Vermette or gave up way, way, way too much? Way too much. But what happened? They won. Who cares? So who cares? Who and they made the finals the next year, did they not? Uh, no. When, no, 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 no. When was the Vermette deal? I think that was the 2015 oh, Cup. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. I got that mixed up. I mean, all their cups blend together. Yeah, right? really. <laughs> they have so many. All the cups. Um, so, yeah, I think it's an, I mean, it's an interesting deal. I also think it's interesting that... <laughs> <laughs> Two of my favorite people, um, Don Sweeney and Joe Sackick, were talking uh, uh, throughout yes. the entire second period of their game, I think, this weekend. Now, you have to forgive me. I, I missed a lot of this weekend being focused on other things. So, Like what? So if I'm foggy on some of the details, I apologize. But uh, Sweeney and Sackick t- talked for the entire second period. The rumor is Boston really wants Gabriel Laniscock, which... Have That's a look cool. at Gabriel. Yeah, he's cool, but look at his contract. How is it? Now, and what and, and and beyond his contract, look at the amount of points he produces. I feel like Boston already has Gabriel Laniscock. What Boston needs is Matt Duchesne. Uh now, what is so interesting about Colorado is they're in this rare territory where they're so bad that how do you possibly properly judge anyone on that team how do you judge their value mm-hmm. i don't think you can if you're colorado you got to be overvaluing yep and you got to think if you're the buyer you're undervaluing i think colorado probably comes out on top there though because you know boston goes or boston or any buyer goes well you know they're having a rough season so i'm not going to pay that much and if you're colorado you go well then why are you here why are you on the phone right now Landis Cog's making 5.5 through 2021. Okay. And he's got 11 goals and 11 assists this year. What did he have last year? 20 goals and 33 assists. Oh, okay. okay. How old is he? He is 24 years young. That's really good. That's that, There are worse deals in the there NHL. Are, uh, but there are worse but deals. look at Boston's team. Yeah. Is he not David Backus? No, you think? <laughs> he's ba- he's Bacchus, but young. Yeah, he's a now, younger Bacchus. Here's the thing. If you do find a way to get Landeskog, what the hell did you sign David Bacchus That's for? That's my point. Yeah. That's my point. So you're are you saying don't acquire Landeskog yeah, as a result? You need Duchesne. Don't get mm. Landeskog. If you wanna if you wanna make a meal, move and you wanna make a big move and you wanna guarantee your playoffs or, or as much as possible, give it up then. Duchesne's more give it up then. What's Duchesne's contract don't like, make, Jesse? Don't make a half hearted deal. <laughs> Duchesne is making six million dollars through twenty nineteen. So two more years. Okay. Okay. What's he got this year in terms of points? This yes, sorry. And the year before because we can't, we, we can't discuss this year. So Duchesne's got fifteen goals, seventeen assists this year. Thirty goals, twenty nine assists last year. I gotta think he's closer to that. Mm-hmm. I gotta think he's, he's like to slightly that. off pace of that number. He and they were also nine. bad last year too. They were yeah, they weren't very good last year. And Duchesne looked so good at the World Cup. Put him on so a line with some good. Put him on a good line. We'll see those. Here's the thing. I think the thirty goals are more indicative of what Matt Duchesne is than the assists. Because I think Matt Duchesne is relied upon to score the goals so much in in Colorado. If he had the chance to set people up more, that assist total would would jump. So we talked about this maybe being a go for a year for Montreal. What is it for Boston then? It's not. I don't know why they're even in this. You think because I think they might be going. You know what, Leroy Jenkins, screw it. One more last hurrah. Let's go. I think it might be back out time. I think it might be Shed Chara, see what you can get for a couple guys' time, but Boston last really likes year, their, pre- their playoff revenue. Dude, last year was the year. They're hot since it. firing Julian. Yeah, you can't not try and make the playoffs. Yeah, they bought last year and missed. But the point is not to try to make the playoffs. The point is to try to win the cup. 
Yeah, but their their point is, hey, let's get these playoff dates. Let's you get know what? Yeah. Three home games, maybe make all that money. Yeah, and then let's let's it, just. If someone win. wants to be the early first half of the two thousands Leafs, and they're in the Leafs division, mm-hmm. you go right ahead. No, I'm, I'm fine with that. You I, go right ahead. I'm man. fine with that. I'm just saying, as a Boston fan, I'd be a little bit worried. I I feel like Boston needs to do this. It's it's go or get off the pot, as the uh, Turner phrase actually goes. If you're gonna go for it, get Matt Duchesne. If you're not, get start shedding contracts. One or the other. Don't go middle of the road. Now, this is interesting. If I, you didn't sign Bacchus, I could understand Lan- Lannis Cog. So we, get, we got a, approximately two more weeks. A hair over two more weeks until the trade deadline. We are going to bring up Landis Cog and Duchesne ad nauseum until something happens or it doesn't. Mm-hmm. The reason we're not bringing up more names is who's out of it? Seriously, who's out of it? Like Jesse, can you bring up the standings? It's and really only Hansel. Arizona. It's Arizona and Colorado. That's it. Hansel. We're gonna hear Hansel. Hansel. Should Colorado so right even be trading their young players? Yeah, I don't understand how that makes them better. Well, I think what they're thinking probably is it, it if they start to go that route, tear it down. Because you think about entirely. Uh, I well, I but think is Duchesne still, still a piece for the future? Even I if think you tear he is. It down. At twenty six, he's twenty six yeah, years 26. old. I think he is, but. What it depends on what you can get for him. Because what if they they might be looking at the Leafs right now and going, well, worked out for them. Mm. And then you look I at I guess, man. And if you're looking at <laughs> look at look at the cost. The cost was a long time of being real bad. Yeah, but most of that was self. In, most of that was not self imposed. Sorry. Yeah. Last year was self imposed. <laughs> most of it was we're trying real hard. <laughs> and and I, I think the problem with Colorado is they're worse and they're still trying. They're worse than we were last year. So why not go, wow. okay, all right, here's the deal. Duchesne, maybe Landis Cox. Landis Cox, he's captain and he's 24. Pretty great. That might be a guy where you're like, well, there's still some more there. Duchesne, you're absolutely going to get more for. And by the time you're ready to compete again in a couple seasons, Landis Cox's 26 and he's got this young group of uh, upstarts that are fired up and ready to go. Maybe a Nolan Patrick. It's like a double rebuild. Yeah. Um, like a two-layered rebuild. Yeah, and, and if you're going to yeah. trade somebody, Duchesne's the guy you get value for. And play Montreal and Boston off of each other. Play them off of each other like Billy Bean did in, uh, like, play it like that, man. Just, oh, oh Adam, really? Because Mark just You're an me. evil man. You, you wouldn't believe what Bergevin just called me back with. Oh, you wouldn't believe what Sweeney just called me back with. Do you think that's how it goes? Absolutely. Absolutely. It comes down to wheeling and dealing for sure. Uh, Detroit, who's last in the Eastern Conference, is currently seven points back of the final wild, uh, wild card spot. Hmm. Wow. And That's Winnipeg, amazing. who sits above Arizona and Colorado, is currently six points back of the final wild, wow. wild card. Wow. That's it. So Three go. wins. Absolutely nobody except for Arizona and Colorado are out of it. Yes. You know what would be hilarious? Absolutely nobody. If Winnipeg finishes like five points out of a playoff spot and still gets a lottery pick. Man, <laughs> if that's how it's shaping up it's to be. Yeah. This might not be a bad year to finish like bottom five. Like you can do it with pride. Yeah. And you could still be like less than ten points out, which is a hot week and an injury or two less away from a playoff spot. And then all of a sudden you get a top five pick too. Yeah. Lucky you. This is this is kidding. Why, <laughs> this is why though it's really good selling season for Arizona and Colorado. Because this is a seller's market, you got two teams. Mm. There's a lack of. There's just a lack of product on the on the market that's available. So you could sell high because there's going to be a lot of teams that want it. So do you think a team like Colorado or Arizona sees Buffalo maybe win a game, let's say against the Leafs, and they go, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Do you want? Yeah, they see Boston t- win. Oh, hey, uh, I almost said Darcy Rick here. Oh, hey, Tim Murray. <laughs> you looked awful good against the Leafs. Sure, you might, you maybe want a little more scoring punch. Maybe yeah. you want to shut down set. Well, no, they don't Not that, just but. that, though. It takes them out of the selling race. Or it makes them oh. get into it later. Oh, I didn't even think about it that that's, way. That's the way I'm thinking about oh, it. Oh, damn. Yeah. You're, looking, you're not looking at more buyers. You're looking at all the stores around yours shutting down. And all of a sudden, you're the only store on the block. It's a little bit evil, but it's like selling it's flowers on Valentine's Day. <laughs> yep, and everyone else's c- crops died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're the only one with flowers on Valentine's Day. I think if 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 
the Bruins or Canadians are going to go for it, go for Duchesne and just go for it. Maybe. Go for it. Just Ooh, do it. This could be a very, very fun year. Um, okay, so Bruins, uh, I said the Bruins are in on, uh, also in on Duchesne. The Chicago Blackhawks. I, how? And. How? And. How? The Pittsburgh Penguins. How? <laughs> I don't know. Well, the Penguins, Where I is guess, Sway so he can tell me how? Trevor Daly, how? Kunitz. Is Kunitz? No, not Kunitz. Trevor Daly. I heard some other names. Letang? Can we bring, uh, not Latang. I don't think you trade Latang. But if you've got... You well, Chris Kunitz is pretty expensive, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, but if you can get... If you can wheel Daly, who I think makes three and a half, and one Something of the Something in that neighborhood. There's a couple players... Or there's like three players on the... on the. Uh, you want me to run down their defenseman? Uh, or just run down the players that make around $3 million. Uh, Trevor Daly is making 3.3. Oli Mata is making 4. Not trading Oli Mata. Uh, you don't want to trade him. Kunitz no. is making 3.8. And Carl Haglin's making 4. He's on IR, though. Because I, I don't know. Matt Deshane might look really good on a wing with Crosby or Malkin. <laughs> and Kessel. Oh, my God. Like, I. That's disgusting. And you'd have to trade dare you? two of those contracts. Mm-hmm. Two of those contracts. And I don't. If, I, <sighs> if I'm not wrong, they still have some depth. It it uh, in Scranton, do they not? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. One guy who I would love to see raise the cup as a black ace for the Pittsburgh Penguins, Stuart Percy. <laughs> I still think he could be useful for them at some point, man. But nobody notices him because he's boring. You know what? I'm still happy for him. Does whoever <laughs> gets uh, Duchesne enough to take again as well? Oh, that's a good question. So I saw a couple of people tweeting about that. I, like, what would it take for Boston to take him back? God, he makes a lot of money, man. The Hawks made a, a move, by the way, that was really interesting over the weekend. I oh, forget who they right. set down, but they're going to save $500,000 setting this person down for their bye week. <laughs> and the Hawks apparently going into the trade deadline. I could be way wrong on this, but I, I read a tweet that said, Hawks... Will apparently have between five and six million dollars to spend at trade deadline. <laughs> you know what? Well, I, I think that's abbreviated, but I, masterful if that's true. You know what I didn't consider with this whole bye week thing? It's not just the players get a week off. It's you can do crap like that and save those precious pennies that some teams need. Have you seen the cap situation of some teams? I, I just haven't been paying attention recently. Without injuries. Detroit is like something like seven million yeah, over the cap. Over. Like I think, six, they're, I think they're going to be in big trouble next year. They're so screwed right now because they were figuring it out and they were going to get by by the skin of their teeth. Gustav Nyquist, we're going to see what kind of a suspension Ooh. he gets. That might even drop during the show. I'm not sure. Um, that was brutal. That screws them bad. bad. Oh, because that still counts, doesn't it? Still mm-hmm. counts, and you got to you got to pay, pay who you call up to replace him. Oh! Remember what happened with Clarkson and how bad that screwed oh, the Leafs? Wow! This could screw the Red Wings bad, and we're talking about a team that was probably not going to play the, make the playoffs anyway. Yeah, and be three or four million bucks over come next year. Speaking of, might be a seller. Eh, I would eh, think maybe so. Detroit, but they still want to. They want to resign Thomas Vanek. No, they don't. They do. Do ask, they? Ask a Red Wings fan. They do. Oh. They are very interested in keeping Vanek Good. around. Do it. Please. Atlantic. Again, I don't have pity for dumb Atlantic teams. Good. <laughs> don't forget to go to break. Oh, yeah. I guess we should go to break. Uh, <laughs> the second segment turns out to be like five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about really that. Long, so. <laughs> we'll go to break and we'll come back and we're going to talk Shattenkirk and the Leafs Habs. The, the Leafs Habs. <laughs> now, Steve, you mentioned this earlier. Montreal with a Matt Duchesne, Kevin Shattenkirk, if they went all in. Shattenkirk will accept a deal to both the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. I heard that. I I saw that on Hockey Night in Canada. Did you? (laughs) Are you a watcher of Hockey Night in Canada? On occasion. Ah. Ah. We should be on Hockey Night in Canada. Yeah, I agree. You're right. (laughs) At first intermission. (laughs) I agree. (laughs) When nothing else is going on. Dangle and cherry. (laughs) Um, And Rob. Shattenkirk. No, no, we just need an all out <laughs> shout fest. We call it Young Scream versus Old Scream. 
<laughs> it's not as catchy as Coach's Corner, but give it time. You're It'll the, be a Canadian institution. You're the cloud, and he's the old man yelling at you. <laughs> Yo, and I just show up in cloud a cloud costume. I just show up. <laughs> no, the whole segment is. No, no I can't. <laughs> I can't. And but, sometimes, like, depending on how I'm feeling, sometimes I'll be a white, fluffy cloud. <laughs> sometimes I'll be a stormy cloud. <laughs> If the leaves are playing the lightning, I'll have a little lightning bolt coming out of me. Oh, I'm so tired. We should definitely make this cloud costume. Absolutely. I think we got a million dollar idea on our hands. Um, uh, Sportsnet, are you listening? Shattenkirk accept, quote unquote accepting a deal with the Leafs, which I believe Nick Kiprios broke. Is that? Uh, he did. Now, I, I, can't, I can't see a situation where Shattenkirk comes to the Leaf, Leafs in any other way other than free agency. I just don't see it happening. Yeah. Unless they're like, listen, we like you, Toronto, so give us a seventh round pick. But yeah. which no, um, I know that's I know that's as dumb as it sounds because it's meant to be. I don't see that happening. I really don't. Why? Why would Kevin Shattenkirk, because he's got a limited no trade list, include Toronto? Is there a and why would that be put out there? Is there a is that a to freak other people out? Is there a, is there a strategy to that? Well, so my initial thought was, if you're Kevin Shattenkirk, use your brain, because you don't want the team that you're going to go to for over half a decade to trade a bunch of pieces for you that would actually be nice to play with. Just go there for free. And it's not free. It's free for them. But you get all the money. Here's why, if I'm not mistaken. If the Leafs trade for him under his current contract, I believe they can re-sign him for eight years. Mm -hmm. If they get him in free agency, it's only seven I but think they, buddy. Yeah, one more wanna, year. You don't want to go that long with somebody. Why not? You don't. Sorry, don't you don't. You don't want to make mil- year. You don't want to make seven million dollars for one extra year. Yeah, that was the uh, no. the stipulation. The stamp code. I, I do, but yeah, you want. Do you want forty nine million dollars, Adam? I, I do. But do you want forty nine million dollars or fifty six million dollars, Steve? Steve I the answer is fifty six. I do. However, I know, however, yeah. bear with me on this one. Okay, St. Louis ain't giving it to you. Adam's and right Toronto's not paying the assets. <laughs> so <laughs> so maybe he just mit, Toronto is And also if you come to Toronto you can make that you can make that money back in total in the entire commercial. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. <laughs> but Toronto is a team on the list. Mm-hmm. Maybe one Montreal, of the other you could do it too. Maybe one of the other teams on the list is willing to pay that. Give Weber a partner for the eternity that he's there. Um, he's like <laughs> you will be shackled for eternity. Yeah, like, I, and I'm not. I, nah, I was gonna say, nah. He clearly wants to come to Toronto, right? Or like, wouldn't mind coming to Toronto. Yeah, among so other I was places. gonna say, like, maybe among other places. I don't know. We see it. We see it a little bit more with the Raptors, I guess. But like, you know, an American kind of going, eh, Canada. I don't know. But I think I don't know. That's is I don't, that, I don't is that starting to go away. That's starting to go I away. Think that's a little starting bit. to go away. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that ever existed really in the NHL that much because Toronto was such eh, a big market. Eh, I mean, a Brett, little bit. A well, little like bit. our own players didn't want to come home because the organization was a mess. Yeah, um, yeah. And that turned out to be okay because Brad Richards. Because Brad Richards. Yeah, we thought it was one thing, but it turned out to be another. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand why the Leafs would do that, and I think right now they're sitting there going, "Yeah, we can wait. We can wait." Did you not see what we went through last year? We can wait. We've been patient. This yeah. has been nice. Lou Lamorello. Yeah, yeah, you want to get into a game of chicken with Lou Lamorello and Brandon Shanahan. I don't know, bud. That doesn't <laughs> yeah. sound like a great idea. If, I, if you got into a literal game of chicken with Lou Lamorello, which is one car driving at another car until someone turns, Lou Lamorello would crash into you. Yeah. He's not moving. Go through the windshield and strangle you. <laughs> <laughs> like I can see it. He's not moving. No. And I, I like that. I think that that, you know, the, the, that way the Leafs are not reacting they're acting hmm. and sometimes by doing nothing you are taking action and i think in this particular case unless you have a fair it, it better be a fair deal and i can't see how it would be like the sign and trades in the nba are always interesting because mm-hmm. they're not the obnoxious price that um that teams in the nhl pay for 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 guys that are going to be unrestricted free agents they're uh it's it's fair ish a little more fair anyway like what is it like a third and a fourth or something something like that, like yeah. that. and in mm. this but in this case that doesn't make sense because most sign and trades happen in that goofy window in the in the nba where you can negotiate with people that the nhl now has but you can't sign them mm-hmm. 
Um, NBA is trapped somewhere between the NHL and MLB on the silly scale. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't see a sign and trade. Just I just don't see that happening. I just yeah. don't see it happening. Hmm. It doesn't work under the NHL salary cap. The salary cap ruins a lot of fun. You know, I've been kind of trying to say that it doesn't for a long time, but I went back and looked at pre-2005 deadlines and post. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, there's a pretty big difference, man. And there's saying, a pretty if you huge have, difference. If you pay luxury tax, that means that the players don't have to pay as much, much escrow and you have more revenue sharing. Just throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there, business people. I don't think it's going to happen. I know, but it should. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it will. It should. I would like it to. Just well, saying. I think the cap is also a reason there's like the last place team is six points out of a playoff spot. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Now, one thing I looked at recently uh, while researching the trade tree because I get sidetracked and research things that don't matter often. Uh, I was talking about teams often, you know, let's say two ish weeks out from the deadline, like to kick things off. Lou Lamorello, that is, he's a big fan of that. His track record uh, suggests he's a big fan of getting ahead of the deadline. So I, if the Leafs are going to do anything, which I'm not even certain they will, mm-hmm. <laughs> might even be by next podcast. Um, Brian Burke was the biggest fan of that. He always said, never make your deals on the day of. Always mm-hmm. do it like a week yeah, before. He still did. He <laughs> still <laughs> sure did. <laughs> even Brian couldn't resist he, a, a juicy uh, trade. Yeah, um, yeah. so I, I don't know. I, I wondered if Shattenkirk putting the Leafs on that no trade clause or list of teams he'd accept a trade to and that getting out there. Cause it's, it's, it's one thing for it to be on the list. It's another thing completely for it to get out. If there was some sort of strategy uh, in that, maybe because the Leafs would know, but what could that put pressure on someone else? Could that put pressure on a Boston or a Montreal or some, whoever else? He's might a be pending in? UFA. Any pressure you can, in, you can put out there accidentally gets you more money. Did that, how much money do you think this report earned Shattenkirk? Is the answer, I don't know, fifty thousand dollars? I think it might have earned it. <laughs> I think it might have earned the blues more if they trade him. Oh. So I'm I'm saying it might come out from maybe that comes from the general manager's office. That Allegedly. Would be so weird maybe. if they did that. Why would like, like on one hand it'd probably be the right move, but on another, like, don't you want to win? You're the blues. You're not that bad. Come on. But what can you get for him? Wins in the playoffs, and hopefully. it's not been the strongest year for you. <laughs> like, like, isn't that the hope? Yeah, but what about what if you're retooling? Which the are Bruce, they? Well, if they're not this year, then I think they they might have to a little bit. They're also a playoff team. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah, and they're a great team. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, sure. Should they, they should they give up? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This is what I was saying about Bishop. Like, you go if you it. fit if you find yourself in a playoff spot right next to the deadline, just give them. Mm-hmm. Just and then worst case scenario. Okay, what's the best offer? Like, are you going to look back years from now and go, you know what? We could have got a third for Ben Bishop. Like, are the least? <laughs> I think they could do better. Are the least going to look back five years from now and go, you know, if only we had gotten that conditional fourth from Michael Grabner, <laughs> we could have really done things. If only we had gotten that conditional third that could be a second for PA Parent to oh. so, so, are you saying that the Lightning will say Bish, please? <sighs> they might say Bish, please. They might say, do you have another defenseman <laughs> that we could use? <laughs> it's not as catchy, but it might be more prudent, might be more practical. Um, so you, you have to consider just holding on to him because you're third you in the central. I don't, you know what? Here's what I want to know. St. Louis. St. Louis fans. On our Reddit page, someone start a post. Do you think it's better for the Blues to trade them and get the assets and retool and make the playoffs? Because you're probably going to the playoffs either way. Or is it better to hang on to them and just go for it? Here's an example. Is this your window? Is this your year? Here's an example of what this is. Well, here, Jesse, where were you? No, go ahead. Um, so who did the Blues lose in the offseason? I'm trying to remember. They lost Troy Brower for nothing. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bill, uh, 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 Elliot. No, yeah, but they traded him. Yeah. It was it was Troy Brower and someone else. David Backus. That's who it was, 100%. And they didn't deal them, and they lost them for nothing. They just walked. You know what this reminds me of a little bit? It's not the same, but a little bit. Remember when Buffalo was really tearing it up? I want to say like 2006, 2007, something like that. And Chris Drury was ruining worlds. And Andy Daniel Briere was ruining worlds. And the Buffalo Sabres competed well on the ice, but they couldn't compete with their wallets. 
pre Pagula anyway. Drury walks, big money. Briere walks, big money. And Edmonton comes along and goes, offer sheet Thomas Vanek. Ridiculous money, absolutely atrocious contract. He, he would have had to have been one of the best players in the league, like a top 10 player in the league for it to even be close to worth it. And Buffalo goes, you know what? We're not losing another one. And they matched it. Now they could have got so many picks for that. Is I, I know how much money An Edmonton An picks. Edmonton picks. Thank <laughs> oh, you, Jesse. Yeah, that would have been their Stanley Cup. McDavid Cup. could be a saver. Be oh a, my God! He, Do we want McDavid Eichel. or Eichel? Mm, both. <laughs> Same line. <laughs> Same McEichel. line. Yeah. <laughs> Release the McEichel, <laughs> and they would just have literally this Kraken-like line that they could throw out there. <laughs> They could they could sign a Mexican player and just th- throw throw that whole line out there. Call it NAFTA. <laughs> just Canada, the states, Mexico, all attacking and scoring every single shift. NAFTA. NAFTA. I'm smart. That was good. I know things. That's good. Um, now is this St. Louis trying to get something for Shattenkirk because they think it's the right thing to do, or because it's actually the right thing to do? I think they should maybe risk losing them for nothing. Do you think this is their year, honestly? And this is the thing? No. (laughs) No, I don't. But if if that is the answer, to me, this is the year you trade. So they just retool then? Yeah. Because next year, you're going to be pretty damn good. You're still the St. Louis Blues. You're just missing Kevin Shattenkirk, and yes, that's a great defenseman. But let's not pretend you can't go and re-sign him in the one free agency hits. I also don't think... Like I think that hurts, but I don't think it breaks them. No, losing Shattenkirk doesn't break them, and, and that's can, that's a testament to the Blues. They can resign him. I don't think that's going to happen. But they could. It's not going to happen. Why not? I don't think they can afford it. Do you guys want to know what the Edmonton picks would have turned into? Yes. Well, and keep in mind, Vanek would have probably improved those teams a little bit. Yeah. But you, you never How know. How good was Thomas Thomas Vanek after that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. No. I don't know. So Edmonton would have received Thomas Vanek for seven years and fifty million dollars. Oh, <laughs> wow! What would be, be in year five of that right now? Mm, what? When was this yeah, offer this sheet? Would have been no three so years ago. Eight. Oh eight. Yeah. So it would oh, be okay. seven. Oh eight. Off season. It yeah, would have oh, expired the year that the Oilers got McDavid. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So oh. they were got the oh eight first round pick, which is Colton Tubar. Um, uh, Colton uh, Tubert, yes. two bear. Okay, first fine. Oh nine first round pick. Um, Magnus Poyarvi. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the 2010 first round pick, which is Taylor Hall. 2011 first round pick, which is Ryan Nugent Hopkins. <sighs> now the 2008 Hall. first. Are you sure it was Colton Tubert and yeah, not Jordan it's Eberle? The, it's Overall, the, it's the LA pick. Oh, Eberle was the LA pick. Uh, no, they would have got the LA pick. Since Edmonton traded back. Oh, I'll take your word for yeah, it. Is what the article says. So, yeah. Woo! That would all be pretty now, nice, wouldn't now, it? Now, and that's that's assuming that Buffalo's scouting would be as bad as Edmonton's. That is true. Because I think I think Buffalo, if there's one thing that they've always done quite well, I think, is draft. So what what would that have been? Five first? One, two, or four? Three, four. Four. Four first round picks. Dog. Four Dog. first round picks, probably in the first fifteen. Let we'll him say, go. let him go, man. If I don't, unless, like, how many players in the league would you not take first round uh, f- four first round picks for? I wouldn't. Uh, I guess for, it depends on the, on the team. Matthews and Marner. Yeah, because yeah, there's no guarantee the you're ever going to resign or you're ever going to get players like that ever again. Mm-hmm. And the other guarantee, the other thing you can't guarantee is um, uh, that you're going to get players that want to play for you, like or can't. That it, it'll ever work out that way. Like you, yeah, you, you get ever, drafted by a team is very difficult to you not play on that team anymore. Yeah, you and just those, don't know. And those first could be like twenty through thirty. First. Yep. Yeah, you know, could be, be. Like twenty two. So. Oh, but if it's baby. but if it's a <laughs> Kasperi Kapanen, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Oh baby, that is that's sick. I forgot that deal happened. Hey guys, we've forgotten again. We must go to break. Must leave you Mm. and go to sportsnet.ca to download the rest of this show, where we will continue discussing, among other things, one of the most painful trade trees in Leafs history: the Wendell Clark 
2.0 trade. Thanks so much for listening. It's the Steve Angle Podcast brought to you by Panago Pizza. It's what's on the inside that counts. So anyway, to me, if you're St. Louis. Retool. You know what? I think you convinced me. Get rid of them. This is the year. What are you? <laughs> get get rid of them. So easy. <laughs> what are you? Just ask, what are you? Well, and this is, you know, it's funny, Jesse. Like, I wonder how many trades are 50-50 and they are made or not made based off a of mood. Oh, yeah. You're having a bad day. Bad week. <laughs> or you're having a bad day or like you're having an empathetic day. You're having like it, it, all these little emotions that could come into play. Like Adam, Adam, in in a couple minutes, uses his handsome face and charm and convinced me. You know what? You need to trade Kevin Shattenkirk. After I passionately was like, they need to go for it. Dun 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 dun. dun. And that all that hellfire and brimstone turned to you know what? They need to retool. And and they're still fine without him. Well, yeah. Daggone it, people like me. So so here's the thing. If St. Louis does trade him, and they are fine without him, yes, will they be less good? Less talented on paper, for sure. But they're still a very, very good and deep hockey team. You've got you've got an Anaheim team. Paul Snasty just went on IR. Damn it. <laughs> now you definitely trade him. Uh, Le- Leafs did that, by the way. Um, now you definitely trade him. But um, if y- your team's very good. So you go to the playoffs, and let's say you get a couple rounds in. How does how does that work out bad for you? Let's say you lose in the first round. How does that look bad either? The co- if you make it to the second second round, you're like, well, damn, that's a lot further than we thought. Plus, we have all these great assets. Plus, Anaheim needs to get rid of defensemen. We on can the come quick. back. Yeah, exactly. And you got and you got the assets to go and get Anaheim's defensemen that are young and awesome. Or <laughs> or if you lose in the first round, you lose in the first round. Whatever, you're still in the playoffs. What and, if oh. Shattenkirk? Would have won you one more round. I don't. Nah, nah he's not like that. Winner, winner, don't. Is he? One more game. You're fr- if you're not first, you're last. One more game, and then that game leads to a win. You know. And he, and then, you know what? The argument can be made that he definitely would. <laughs> then is it worth it to keep him a playoff win? I'd like to know how deep St. Louis's defense is. In terms of like prospects, can somebody can can somebody move up and step into that role? Not necessarily to the level he was at, but can mm. is there a suitable replacement? Well, Colton Pareko, Alex Petrangelo, the team's in a, and they've got Bo Meester still good spot. Like they're yeah. they're deep, man. Yeah. And what if you get another great young forward or great young defenseman or both? Get someone to take the heat off Tarasenko a little bit. Yeah. What about a Michael McCarron and a first? Oh, I'm thinking a little bit better than that. I don't know. This, yeah. You also got to get in the mindset of the Blues. So, Leafs, uh, Leafs fans, we kind of have this. Uh, what, what am I looking for? This perpetual futility, if you will, that we're hopefully just coming out of. The Blues have something different. It's perpetual, like mediocrity. A little I bit different. Call what they've done mediocre. They went to the Western Conference Finals last year. When you've been them for long enough, it's mediocre. You know what I mean? A first round loss, no matter who it was to, no matter what the circumstances, is mediocre. For that second round loss, no matter what the circumstances, is mediocre. Anything less than a cup, you've been able to call the Blues a contender for at least half a decade now. The Capitals have the same disease. You know, you might not be wrong. It might even be worse. Yeah, it might even be worse because. The Blues, you go, yeah, I could see them contending. Caps year in, year out. You're like cup favorite. Yeah, the Capitals <laughs> could be are a cup a favorite. Mm-hmm. They're a terror to other teams. They're a horrifying team. They're a horrifying team. But best team in the regular season doesn't always win. I think I brought it up last podcast. Or no, I didn't. I no, sorry. This was another thing. In I I uh, in researching the trade tree, which we'll get to. Um, so the Leafs bulked up for the 1996 playoffs. Which oh. I think was the bad move. The <sighs> bad move, because the Leafs they ended up fin- finishing fourth in the East. Sorry, fourth in the West, because they were still in the West at the time, with eighty points. Whoa. Second in the West was Colorado with one hundred and four. First in the West Detroit. was Detroit with one hundred and thirty-four. And that was a record, right? I'm not. I'm maybe. pretty sure most points all time. I'm pretty sure. Well, didn't didn't work for them. They lost in the conference final Two? to Patrick Waugh and the Colorado Avalanche. Yes, but then came back and beat them the next year. 
Um, and won their first cup. They did win a cup. The next year, 96-97. Did they beat Colorado en route? Uh, yeah. And they beat Philly, and they also beat Anaheim in the second round. And who did they play in the first? I forget. <laughs> I forget. But I remember It was that just not vividly. the year to bulk up. No, for the and, Leafs. And the Leafs tried it. They, for, they tried to bulk up, and no, even if you make it through the first two rounds, you got to take on one of Detroit or Colorado. And even worse, in the first round, the Leafs run into the Blues. Who are very good. Who... Instead of acquiring guys like Matthew Schneider and Wendell Clark, who were good, acquired Wayne freaking Gretzky. <laughs> and they didn't Gretzky. Yeah, they St. Louis won. They right? won in six games. And Man, they took the Detroit. Leafs lost to Gretzky twice. They took a few Detroit. Years. I know. And the Leafs' leading scorer in that series was Doug Gilmore, and the Blues' leading scorer in that series was Wayne Gretzky. Uh, and the Blues took those amazing Red Wings all the way to Game 7 in Round 2. Until Steve Eiserman scored that ridiculous slap shot goal, right? Off of a uh, partial turnover by Wayne Gretzky in the neutral zone. Ooh. I watched the That goal. was one of the most ridiculous. I think that's up there with the most ridiculous goals of all time in terms of how beautiful. How Excuse my language. How fucking beautiful. <laughs> was Holy. Wow. It was just like laser beam. Do you remember the name of the St. Louis goalie? Is it Grant Fuhrer? No. Uh, hang on. Grant Fuhrer was the backup. Grant Fuhrer was the backup in St. Louis at this point. Oh. I'm trying to remember his first name, actually. I don't know. Casey. Sean Casey or not a Sean Casey? Uh, I want to say... Jim... Uh, it was, his last name was Casey. That's Grant all Fuhrer I remember. Was it the starter? No, he did well in the playoffs, but he was not the starter. Interesting. It was Casey. Jesse's looking it up. Damn. I feel stupid for not knowing his first name. Well, it, it wouldn't have mattered if he was... John. John, John Casey. Casey. What it matters it's who he was. It's such a plain name that you feel like it's wrong, you um, know? The only thing that stops a puck like that is a big body. Period. End of story. That was so fast and so unbelievably accurate. Yeah. That's the only way that's, that thing stops. How many Stanley Cups do the last 13 President's Trophy winners have? So first place teams. Yes. First overall. Well, most the of them are Vancouver, so none. <laughs> <laughs> uh, St. Louis, I think, and Washington. Maybe. Maybe. 13, so we're going back to... 2003. I'm going to say four. I'm going to say zero. They have two. Oh. Ooh, who are they? The right Blackhawks in 2013. Yeah. They won the cup. They will. Well, they had like a what? Like a like a ridiculous 20 game unbeaten streak, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And it was shortened season. That's, and then the, 20, the 2008 Detroit Red, Red Wings won the cup. Such a beastly team. So there you go. beastly. Wow. So being best doesn't always work out. And who's who's uh, top right now? Caps? Washington, the Washington Capitals. <laughs> and they've won the Presidents before, haven't they? Didn't they win it last oh, year? Oh, dude, like year. a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. They won it last year. They won it in 2010 as well. Damn. There you go. No cups. Boy, oh boy. Damn, damn, damn. Uh, speaking of Detroit, that you brought up. Gustav Nyquist, uh, I keep checking my phone, and you've probably noticed that if you're watching the YouTube video, because he's supposed to get, uh, well, he's having a hearing today, so I assume he's going to get suspended today. I'm waiting to see if it drops during the show. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, there is no way he gets less than 10 games, right? For what he did to Jared Spurgeon, or Jared Spurgeon, as Don Cherry likes to call him. Um, 10 games, you think? Sorry? There's, uh, there's no way he gets less. If I'm the league, honestly, what I would give him as the league's head disciplinarian is 20. Yeah, I would And too. you look at, some people were going, well, Duncan Keith did this and this player did that. Okay, tell you what. How about we not look at any other precedents? Just look at the play. How about I, uh, so I don't remember those things you're talking about, but I have never seen someone get speared in the face on purpose Un- Let's watch this one more oh, time. Oh, yeah. Here. Jesse's going to. Oh, geez. It's just brutal. Obviously, you guys won't see it. But Now, Spurgeon cross checks him in the back and bang. Right- it's 100% intentional. He gets caught on nothing. He meant to do it. He's got like a maniacal face on when he does it. If I'm the head disciplinarian of the NHL, I give him 20 games. 20 <sighs> games. I don't even feel bad about it. You got four he minutes. He got four minutes. That's not an intent to injure. He- that should have that gotten booted. The ref maybe just thought he was careless now, with his stick. Now I would. I, I don't was, know. Can, There's a lot going on. Can I, feel I bad. for one second? Yeah. Play devil's advocate because I don't want to believe 
that somebody in the NHL would do this to somebody else. I don't part I and and I and I don't mean that he didn't. I just don't want to believe that that was intentional. So is Me it neither, possible? But is it possible on any level? And I'm not saying this should reduce his go sentence. Ahead, go ahead. That he was trying to lift his stick up and slap slap the guy's stick out of his hand, no. slash him on the wrists. No. Is there any possibility he was trying to lift the stick up over his head? None. And J- Jesse, if you want to watch it again, you, you guys, I've seen it enough times. Uh, look at the look on Nyquist's face. The look on his face. You know what happened was he got cross-checked by Jared Spurgeon. It wasn't even that bad of a cross-check, really. Mm-hmm. It was a pretty run-of-the-mill cross-check. And Nyquist just saw the red mist. He just, the rage came over him. Our team has sucked for a long time. We're getting filled in this game. I've had enough. Shank. Right to the freaking face. He was inches, centimeters, away from ruining Jared Spurgeon's career. That's Brian Burrard. Yeah. That could be worse than Brian Burrard. He could have stabbed him in the eyeball. Now, it, did, did Spurgeon, what's the what's what's the prognosis on him? I didn't even see the cut. Uh, might not have been I'm that bad. I'm pretty sure he came back and played more in that game. So he didn't break yeah. a cheekbone oh, yeah. or anything like that? Because it looked like it could have. Yeah. No. Uh, luckily, like, thank God. And this, like, I hope the NHL doesn't look at this and go, well, no huge injury on the play. That's not a reason not to suspend someone. The action is what's suspendable, not the outcome. Does like, that make if sense? I, if I take off my skate <laughs> and I just come at you like Happy Gilmore <laughs> and I graze you. But the cut's not that bad, and it doesn't even require stitches. Ah, two games. Should I get, yeah, two, two games, games but we're not or going booted to the from the league? Two games, but going to the Olympics and is And criminal too hard. charges. <laughs> you know? I, I, I think if, because uh, I think there's a couple new guys in charge. Um, George Peros, I think, is new to the Department of Player Safety. There's this, a new sheriff in town. Man, this, this, is a, this is a big deal. Big test for them. I, I would personally give 20. Because that's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. But you got to give at least 10. Anything um, less than 10 is disappointing. The report is just a fat lip and some stitches to his lower left cheek. Thank goodness. This is the injury. Yeah. You Thank want goodness. my prediction? Six. He's going to get six. I want to go higher. Only because I also... Here, I want to believe that Nyquist didn't mean to do it. Mm-hmm. I also want to believe that the NHL is going to make a statement. Because that is such a gruesome oh, thing to look at. The so NHL, stupid. If the NHL so gives, genuinely stupid. The NHL gives them six games. Like you, om- do you not politically as the NHL sort of have to over suspend this guy just to just to say never is this happening in our game ever again? Well, like Sean Avery waved his hands in front of Martin Broder's and face, the and the NHL went enough of this nonsense, and they changed. Yeah, they and literally totally changed the rules on the fly. Thing. It was totally fair to do. I uh, is this not worth throwing the book at someone? I think. And I and again, I'm the one who doesn't want to believe that he meant to do it. Even though Look I'm pretty sure face. he meant to do it. I Look know, at his face. Listen, I know. I know. I just He meant to do that shit. I just can't believe that a human being is temporary what's on the line. Temporary you know, insanity. He saw the yeah. red mist and he meant to do it for Less than a full second. Jesse's got the ultra slow motion here. Let's look at that face. <laughs> Motherfucker. Could he have been going for his shoulder? No. Uh, Not at all, man. He's going for the fox. Damn, dude. That He's is going just right for the moneymaker. That's a once in a decade thing. Event yeah, look at. Oh, happening. my God. Oh my god, you got like phantom cam slow motion. Yeah, this is like 10,000 frames a it second. It happened so fast. Like, Adam, tell me what he's going for there. He shanked him in the face. Yeah, he did. He shanked him in the face, man. Thing, what a psychopath. When you watch the ultra slow motion that Jesse has, and I think that's the NBC feed. Is that on Sportsnet? I just, just slow down the YouTube video. Oh, you just slow down the YouTube yeah. video. That's amazing. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. So he's, Jesse is ultra <laughs> slowing this video down. It goes so fast. You know when, when someone comes at you and fake punches you and you react? Yeah, I punched my friend square in the nose uh, in a Krav Maga class once and I felt really bad. Yeah, I didn't mean to. I just I was a rookie. I didn't calculate my space properly and I punched him right in the schnoz. So Jared Spurgeon doesn't even have time to wince before this happens. Doesn't have time to even move his face. Blink. Look at just look at it one more time. Jesse, if you mind pulling it back for Steve and I, I want everybody listening at home to do the same thing. So watch watch him. His face doesn't move his neck 
doesn't move. His eyes don't blink. His breathing patterns don't change. That is like it's crazy well, to watch. It happens so fast. It 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 was like it was like that. The only thing this reminds me of in terms of the way Spurgeon reacts, and I guess the way Nyquist reacts. Not necessarily in Ny- Nyquist in- injuries involved. Like, there's no, there's no sorry or anything. He just kind of. It reminds me a little bit of Chris Simon slashing Ryan Holwig in the face, which if if you don't know what I'm talking Whoa. about, look that up. Because just like this play, it's one of those things where you just go, "What the fuck?" Like what? The, like like okay, if Nyquist gets up and just starts punching Spurgeon, that's not that weird. I've oh. seen players lose their temper before. But Holwig hits Simon from behind, and he slashes him, two-hand slash, in the face. And Holwig, who was a tough guy, drops like a sack of bricks. Like, part of it is the pain. The other part of it is, Jesus Christ, did he just do that? It's a weapon. And Spurgeon's going, like, you're hitting the ice. Before he's even hit the ice, he's probably going, what the fuck just happened? Why did he do that? Am I blind? (laughs) It's absolutely insane. I don't know what he was thinking. I don't care if that's not indicative of the type of person Gustav Nyquist is. If if, if he's a super nice guy, you got to send a message. I can't imagine that's a typical Gustav Nyquist play. No, the, my first <laughs> thing was, oh, why would Steve Ott do that? And <laughs> no, uh-huh. is this guy who like I, I don't even remember like a minor penalty that he's taken. Well, I, and I, then I don't I don't know. Does I, the NHL look at that and go, well, he's got no prior history, so two games. I don't care. I don't care, man. I give him. I I would be. Satisfied with the dirty dozen, I say ten. I'm saying ten, but only because I don't. I, I don't believe it, but I say ten. Jesse, you know how you say things trying to convince yourself. I don't think ten's enough either. Fifteen. Whoa. I like fifteen. I, that's my. Guess. I like fifteen. Yeah. I like. It. I like it. He's gonna get six. But yeah, he's gonna get. But <laughs> he's just, gonna get he's six. Right. He's gonna get six. Um. Okay. So stupid. Let's One talk, of the dumbest things I've seen. Talk a little. A little bit here about your dangle trade tree. Oh. Um. So I had two Islanders trade trees up my sleeve, and I said, no. Don't give this away, by the way. Don't give the players away, because it's too good. Oh, yeah? It's too good. Is it up? This has got to be a tease. Oh, it's up, yeah. This has got to be a tease. It went up while I uh, had a mid-morning nap. (laughs) This one is so juicy that you can't. Oh, it's like 1,600 words, multiple charts, great videos from the 90s. Um, It's good. Sit down, have a cup of coffee, like, like enjoy this one. Have a Bailey's coffee if you want. Perhaps a Kahlua coffee. Um, so, li- like I sort of teased earlier, it's the 1996 playoffs. Uh, again, the context of the time. And this is why I go, I wonder if the Blues just try to win now. Leafs make it to the conference final in 93. Leafs make it to the conference final in 94. Heartbreaking seven-game first-round loss to the Blackhawks in 95. Because again, the not Leafs, well remembered, by the way. Yeah, not Leafs, very well. Leafs remembered. used to be in the West, which was stupid. Ed Belfour, I remember, could not be beaten. So 1996 comes, and you go, you know what? The West sucks. West is not very good. Uh, Tampa was the worst team to make the playoffs in the East with, I think it was 88 points. Winnipeg was the worst team to make the playoffs in the. West with 78 points. How is that even possible? New Jersey missed the playoffs in the East with 86 points. The Leafs were fourth in the West with 80. So Whoa. if you're the Leafs, you got to look at that and go, were, you know were the what? Were Leafs that bad or were Detroit and Colorado that good? They were that good. I, I, I don't know how many times the Leafs played the Red Wings that year, but I can't imagine the Leafs did very well. I mean, what was the just can was, you can you way, look up the 1995-1996 Detroit Red Wings record? That's pre-Shanahan. I think Paul Coffey was still on the team mm, and Keith Primo. I think no. Yeah. I think that was Shanahan. Mm. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's true. I don't know what the fuck it is. We sounded like a tea kettle there, by the way. Um and then you scalded yourself. So if you're uh, the Leafs, you gotta go, okay, you know what? The West sucks. We've done really well in recent memory. Last year was a bit of a blip. Craig Willennan. Yeah, I, I think we can pull this off. Jesse, what was their record? The Detroit Red Wings were 62, 13, and 7. And the 7 are ties, by the way, not <laughs> losses. Yeah, they had 131 points. Do you want to know the roster? Yep. Oh, please. They had uh, Mark Bergevin. Hey! Doug Brown. Dino Cicerelli. Oh, uh, Hall Paul of Fame. Coffey. Hall of Fame. 
Um, do, do Chris Draper. Sergey Gold medal. Off. Hall of Fame. Ah, t- 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 who else is in out? Martin Lapointe. Igor Larianov, Nicholas Lidstrom, Darren McCarty, Chris Osgood, Keith Primo, <laughs> Ray Shepard, Mike uh, Vernon, Osgood Steve Osgood potentially Eisenhower. Hall of Fame, by the way. And, and Hall of Fame. Mike, Ver- Mike Vernon, for sure. There you go. Woo! And Stevie Y at his peak. Woo! So that was pre-Shanahan. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. You're 100 right, uh, 100% right. I think that was Russian 5. Yeah, Fististov and Konstantinov I think they had and Konstantinov all those guys in there too. on it. Yep. Konstantinov's up in there. My goodness. Konstantinov ruined worlds. Ruined worlds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in that Philly series the oh. following year. So the Leafs that's, decide, that's you know what? We're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. And they make a big deal. Can I say the players that the Leafs got? Yes. But don't say what they gave up. From the New York Islanders, the Leafs acquire. This hurts me. DJ Smith. Defender DJ Smith. And also now assistant, uh, now coach. assistant coach of the current Leafs. Uh, defender oh. Matthew Schneider, who for the longest time, I don't think he holds this record anymore, held the record for most points by a Jewish NHL player. Really? Yes. I, I think that record was, uh, I, I want to say Mike Camilleri owns it now. I have to what's, say, what's I, the record for Catholic NHL players? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, okay, what's I have a Buddhist NHL record. Well, yeah. A very calm 100. I have one of those Jewish friends who knows everyone who's Jewish, and he's like, <laughs> I didn't know Camilleri. Camilleri is Jewish? I didn't know that. I believe so. Wow. Again, I've never looked at an NHL player and thought, I wonder what the religion is. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't Google it. It's just, I don't you know. Your friend told you. Lenny Kravitz. Guess what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? A few times. One of us. One of a us. A few one times he's us. been wrong. A few times he's been wrong. And a couple times I just haven't fact checked. I think one time he was like, Jose Bautista. I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're but, interested. <laughs> I, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway. Can you Google that, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> the Jewish. Can you please Google that? And then Mike Camilleri and Matthew Schneider. And well, Schneider, I can... Uh, Schneider seems a little more likely. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I thought Camilleri would be like an Italian name. A little more... There are Italian Catholic. Jewish people. Well, okay, fair enough. Here Have you, you seen La Vida Bella? I haven't. I don't know what that is. It's an extremely sad movie. Okay. Yeah. Jose. But a good one. Batista is observantly Jewish. What? what? Born to a Dominican father and an Israeli mother. So Had no go. idea. Well, Nate. <laughs> well, Nate. Great job. Well done, Nate. I had no idea. Can we check with Mike Camilleri, too? Sure. Because you, you would think somebody with a name like Camilleri, Roman Catholic country, predominantly. It is. It is. But that's why I am. But yeah. Mike Camilleri, whose mother is Jewish. That makes that's it makes him that for makes sure him Jewish. Jewish. No, no, it makes him that's a it's apparently it now uh, <laughs> forgive me if I'm wrong. For, from what I understand of Judaism, you are based on your mother's side, if you're if your parents you 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 pick up Judaism as whatever your your mother's relation religion. Man, is. here's what I know. Attended one Jewish wedding. Wicked fun. End of list. I, was I, I, I held the chuppah. I helped. Here's something. <laughs> I, I went to a Jewish wedding and I helped. I helped. This is from jewornotjew.com. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's the greatest Jewish hockey player of all time? Oh boy, you stumped us there, anonymous questioner. <laughs> hmm, we'll probably have to go with Matthew Schneider who has played over 20 years in the NHL, won the Stanley Cup with the Montreal Canadiens and the World Cup of Hockey with Team USA. But maybe, just maybe, there's a new answer to this question. For Mike Camilleri is entering his seventh NHL season where he will be playing oh, so for the old. Canadians and are making the switch from the Calgary Flames. Nah. Last season he scored 82 points, good for 13 in the league, blah, blah, more stats, not too shabby. I gotta go so, with Matthew, go. Matthew Schneider's. Overall. This was from 2009. Yeah, clearly. Uh, Jew or not Jew.com has not updated recently. That's Well, that is a shame. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. So anyway, the Leafs get two defenders, DJ Smith, who was a depth defender, Matthew Schneider, who was a young up-and-coming defender mm-hmm. from the New York Islanders. And cup winner. And cup winner with the Montreal Canadiens. And whom else? A man by the name of Wendell Clark. The Leafs reacquire Wendell Clark. Now, he was he's he's beloved in Leafs Nation. I mean, he's got his number in the rafters and everything, but you don't realize how beloved he was 
at the time. Leafs fans, you know, were pretty happy with Matt Sundin's production, but they missed Wendell Clark. They missed him. And they didn't like seeing him on the Nordiques. Blech. And then he goes to the Islanders. In the post, I included Wendell Clark's first game back in Toronto as a member of the Leafs. Every time he touched the puck, you wouldn't believe this game was played in Toronto. Maple Leaf Gardens was so incredibly loud that night. Wendell Clark gets out there, starts throwing hits his first shift, and doesn't the bugger score a goal in his first game, blowing the roof off the place. That's why they had to make the ACC, by the way. As Wendell Clark scored a goal in 96, (laughs) and they literally played without a roof for almost three years. Wow. That is how loud it was. That's a fun stat. And what it is. Also, did you know that Matthew Schneider is... No, sorry. Uh, now that's before the corporations took over and took the game out of the hands of the families and put it in a corporation. Shut up, a rich. There's a corporation. There's, Shut there's, up, a rich. There's some really old uh, global television sportscasts. Oh, that, I that, remember watching... I remember watching on Global. Oh, yeah, that I that I in, included in the post. They're a really, really great time capsule. And you, and you hear... Uh, I don't know if I included this video, but one of the related videos... Videos on the side, you'll hear the Leafs talk about potentially signing free agents or retaining their coach, and you hear them like nickel and diming, like they're they're worried that they can't afford free agents. Well, they couldn't. The Leafs, quote unquote, couldn't afford Wayne Gretzky th- that off season. The two free agents this particular off season were Brett Hull and Ron Francis. Wow, like all timers. Sign them both. You're the Leafs. I know. Well, apparently they couldn't. Well, hmm. apparently they could hmm. not. This is before I'm. Uh, you know, we asked, we asked Richard Petty about that. Now, this was before he was ever with the Leafs, but he did know Steve Stavro, and Steve Stavro I, was in one of the newscasts. I I asked him was point blank. I said, what, did did the Leafs have Gretzky and then not and then not have Gretzky because Stavro stepped in and said, no, I don't want to pay for him. And Richard's answer was, in, in never in my experience was Steve Stavro afraid to to spend money. Hmm. But Steve Stavro also ran out of money close to there and sold the team. Or at least that was what the newspapers were saying. So I wonder, I always wondered about that. I always wondered about that. Was Damn Gretzky it. a Leaf? Was Gretzky a Leaf? Was he really? Because that's the rumor. Anyway, yeah, it's funny to hear them nickel and diming because they were just being cheap. So so I can't say what the Leafs gave up, eh? No, you can't. But it is brutal. Put it this way. The Leafs, it's so uh, about, about a month or so ago, we were talking about the Niedermeyer trade, and I said, you know what? There's another trade that the Leafs made that I think might be worse. Mm-hmm. And it was this one that I was referring to. It's not this one. This one's not even close to the worst in Leafs history. It's not. Wow. It's not. Now, they gave up a lot, and you will read that. It will break your heart. One word goalie. Uh, it will break your heart. But what? What? It makes the Rask for Raycroft trade look like child's play. This well, deal. it literally would have prevented it. Yeah. And so, we have Rask and so-and-so. You would have never... No. It, it, my theory is you could have rode Pot Van for a couple more years like the Leafs ended up doing. Then you sign Curtis Joseph as a free agent and you let this goalie develop under Curtis Joseph. And once he's done, you don't go out and sign Ed Belfort. You let this guy into your net. Then you don't have to make Rask for Raycroft. You never have to buy out Ed Belfour. You never have to have Vesa Toskala in your life ever once. Ah. And they screwed it all up. And they didn't have to screw it all up, as you will read in there. Now, but why isn't this the worst trade ever? The worst trades ever in Leafs history, they get virtually nothing for a lot. In this one, they gave up a lot, but they didn't get nothing. Um, they were able to turn Matthew Schneider into Alexander Karpatsev, who they were able to... I am going to stop you right there because it's worth reading. No. Oh, okay. I I don't want you to blow it. Yada, yada, yada. It's so good. They ended up getting, I think, almost 800 games worth of games played out of several different defensemen. That's not nothing. That's not nothing. Um, They would have preferred to keep what they had. Especially the defensemen they gave up. Yeah, it's not just it's they not gave just up the a pick. defenseman. It's not just the pick, it's the defenseman they Who ended gave up, up being a capitaine. But we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in the post. Yeah, so let's just leave it. Let's just leave it. Can we just leave it? 
I I wrote the thing, but it's a good one. It's a damn good one. <laughs> I love this one. You'll like it if you're an Islanders fan too, because included in the trade tree is what is considered I what I think is either first or either the worst or second worst trade in New York Islanders history. And I'm gonna stick up for you and say this is not the worst. The worst is very obviously Chara and Spezza for uh, Yashin. Yashin. <laughs> for 20 years of Alexi Yashin. <laughs> um, this one was bad, but it took them a while, but they recovered. So both the Leafs and Islanders making boo-boos, but I bring it all around in the end. I think you're really going to like it. Sportsnet.ca for that. Let's go to the press conference. Have you guys seen what the Florida Panthers are offering season ticket holder renewal. <laughs> I, uh, on purpose, didn't look at this. I have no idea. It is ridiculous. Is it the so, Dale Talon thing? Yes. Okay. So, if you renew your season tickets, you're going to be eligible for 30 days of giveaways from the Florida Panthers. So, Oprah just bought the Panthers. It's good to know. So, if you <laughs> renew by February 13th, which was yesterday... Um, you'll be eligible for the next 30 days to win one of these prizes. And then if you renew on the 14th, you get whatever the next 29 days. So do you guys want to run down some of these prizes? I do. The Florida Panthers are giving Because away? I got to assume that you're going to at least win one of them because there's only 30 Florida Panther season ticket holders as it is, right? So someone's Doug gonna Sifu will drive you to the game. You want to know some of the prices for season tickets first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much? So the cheapest season ticket package you can get is $645. <laughs> That's one Leaf game for two here. <laughs> Adam, what did you pay for those Jays playoff tickets? About that. About that. <laughs> About that. You can sit in like the last seat and buy season tickets for $645. So I would do 41 it. 41 home games. I would do it. Because most of the games you probably could move up anyway. Who's going to stop you? <laughs> Honestly. Well, um, the high end, the highest you can pay for a season ticket in the Club Lexus, where you get all-inclusive food, beer, wine, and soda all year long. Yeah, and and... Friggin' people come and feed you grapes. <laughs> so how Shaved much, grapes. How much mm. do you think it is? Well, are there other kinds? Oh. For the Club Lexus season ticket package. For the season? For yeah. 41 games? You got a club with all-inclusive food, beer, wine, and soda. It's got to be at least five grand. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll say four. Okay. It's, I'll say four. It's $8,000. That's still pretty damn good. Shh, the fact that you're they, getting... They, to be fair, the Panthers have set the bar really low in terms of prices. That's yeah. why you shot low. <laughs> I'm not surprised. In Toronto, that's so 150, 200 grand. It's at oh, least, it's at least 20 Gs. Yeah. Like, oh my God. For a club at the ACC? Oh, a club. club. We're it's not talking club, platinum. Yeah, you're we're getting, talking... This is a club. Oh, so you get like a box. On. The club for your Lexus? Season. You get a box. Oh, all, you get a... Yeah, for eight thousand five hundred dollars, guys, guys, you're getting a ball. If we were okay, so how if, do you pay your players? If we lived in Florida, tell me we're not splitting that cost. Oh God, we're getting four of them. <laughs> we're getting four different boxes because we each need one, and one should be how empty. much? Yeah. How much to own five percent of the Panthers? <laughs> I don't think the I don't think that they want to. How put much that you up. got? How much you got? <laughs> Damn, I, I want to own 5% Anyways, of the Panthers. So that's, that's to get a box. That is I want to own 1% of the Panthers. So let's run down some of the first the first prize, if you had renewed yesterday and you were in the raffle for this prize amongst all the season ticket holders. The first prize is dinner with a player. What? <laughs> you get to have dinner with a player. I Dude, I can't that. even interview the rookies. I feel bad for that player. Imagine you're that player and you got to you gotta go to dinner with a random person you don't know. Yeah. You got to think that a representative from the Panthers is going to come with you, right? Yeah, Mayor, we would like to. Nope. All right, Jonathan, <laughs> we would, uh, we're going to try you. Um, today's prize is an Apple iPad, yeah, all right. which is like basically the cost back. of your Imagine season seats. You spend the you want the six hundred dollar package, and then you go for your iPad. It's like you just bought an iPad. Um, then I'm selling the iPad, <laughs> making my money back, and then going to get Florida Panthers games for free. Tomorrow's <laughs> prize for a season ticket holder is join broadcasters on air during home game. Randy Moeller? Is so, Randy still doing it? Yeah, I don't know. I Make me so. a bicycle clown! I hope he <laughs> no, is. he does their TV now. Oh, even better. I, you is know that what? the radio broadcast or the television broadcast? Um, I don't know. I it, would hope it's it TV. See, they left it open. Yeah. But see, I, I actually saw Randy Moeller 
when the Panthers were in town, I was there to see James, obviously. Uh, and I didn't say hi to Randy. I was shy. I wanted to be like, I really like you. You said hi to James, but you didn't say hi to Randy? <laughs> um, listen, you, where's your Randy first Bull- of all, oh, I'm not you- shy to say hello to my father. Or were you afraid because you met Randy Muller, you'd have to get a Randy Muller action figure for 80 the bucks? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're actually only 40. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> no, the like, Randy Muller doll. <laughs> I didn't know what to say to him other than I've heard all your crazy clips on YouTube. <laughs> have you heard his crazy clips? I, I have heard okay, some. Okay, yes, all right. Yeah, yes, they're great. Yes. Make me a bicycle clown. <laughs> um, the prize for the 16th is a $100 uh, Tijuana Flats gift card. The 17th, you get a signed Panthers hockey stick. The oh. 20th, you get valet parking for free. For all for the entire season. Oh, the entire season! Whoa! Whoa! Entire season <laughs> for all of next year. You get A- Adam's going me to what he thought was one forty <laughs> first. Yeah, like one forty one. No, all of next year, you win a valet parking for free. Because in Toronto, again, to park for the game, it's thirty dollars at yeah. least. So how do they make it money be in Florida? But is this like Euro trip when you like you flick the valet a nickel? And he's like, I buy my own hotel. <laughs> um, I buy the lightning. This one's pretty cool. On the 21st, the prize is a trip for two to the Winter Classic. <laughs> so wherever it's being held next year, they're going to fly you out Are, there. Is get, Florida in it? They will arbitrarily fly you to a team uh, no. that the Panthers aren't even involved <laughs> yeah. in. You just get a trip for two to the Winter Classic next year. But they're not in it. No. The Florida will never be in a Winter Do you, Classic. I guess a trip for two, ah! that, would, that would include hotel. Yeah. It's a trip. No, you're not putting Florida in the winter classic. <laughs> Why not? Get out of town. Why not? Who would want okay, that? unless it's in Chicago and you know Chicago's going to show up. I think you just made next year's winter <laughs> classic happen. <laughs> I don't even think that's happening. It needs to be uh, a Northeast team. Let's uh, be honest. Uh, uh, Could be Seattle. The Seattle Coyotes. Uh, the Seattle uh, Golden Knights. On the 23rd. Everybody, every new team has to be the Golden Knights, by the way. Every new team from now on is the Golden Knights. I Portland wants a team. Seattle wants a team. Meet in the middle. The uh, Seattle Portlandias. And it's brought to you by the show. It's going to happen. So on the twenty third, there's no prize. there's no concessions, just bookstores. <laughs> the, the Seattle Steam, no, 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 the Portland Steampunks. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's got to be hipster. Anyway, continue. The twenty third, the prize is you get to sit in the owner's club seats for one home game. Uh, Vinny God. Viola will give you a massage. <laughs> it's one of the prizes you get app- appointed for uh, Secretary of the Army. So, well, <laughs> we're getting to one big prize. Oh, really? Coming up on the last, the second last day. They're known as the Computer Boys team, and if you win today's prize pack, they will give you their computers. <laughs> on the 27th, you get a helicopter ride to the game. Get the fuck out of here! Get out! Get the fuck out of here! I'm not here. <laughs> this is amazing. Shut up. Yo, Panthers fans, what are you waiting on? <laughs> and you what are you one doing? In, one in 30. Like, like one in 30. There's 30 sh- prizes. So how many season ticket holders do you think 30. there are? 30. Like, never. <laughs> Forget Panthers fans. Do you go to Florida once? Ever? <laughs> you, then you should enter. <laughs> Adam, how don't you own season seats for the Panthers? For we've, six hundred dollars, we've talked about this before. We almost, investment. we almost bought them once. Yeah, we did almost as a buy show. Them. We should do it. It well, that was when it was really. What you got? What did you get? A free jersey, free parking, and free food for the entire season when you were. <laughs> Jogger is also your butler. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And you get to keep Jonathan Mar- Marcheseau. Like you just get to like he's he's yours, yours. now. He's just uh, he's your friend. A high five. It's like that older the what, what's it called the Big Brother program. Yeah, he's just yours now, and he's your friend. You wake up in the morning, you come downstairs, he's just having cereal at your table. Morning, he's your friend now. He helps you with rent. Nice. Yeah, he's just a good guy. Yeah, just a good. You do the laundry, he folds. That's a nice system. That's cool. Yeah, that's a good room. After the helicopter ride, there's a 40 inch flat screen TV. And then on on March first, so, that's uh, relatively cheap compared to what's been given away. Well, yeah, that was bad. I mean, there's reasonable. a helicopter ride TV. <laughs> March first, a trip for two to the Stanley Cup Finals. Again, a so, game in which the Panthers will not likely be in. March second could be pretty lucrative because you get a one raffle ticket more than the helicopter ride. For every fifty fifty draw next year, you get one ticket. What? <laughs> You get one free entry. <laughs> I don't know, man. This is this is sounding like a good idea. We like, should each put a two hundred bucks and buy a seat. We are why are we doing for it? not already having these tickets? We made back the money. Worth it. Now, but this is just renewal, though. 
I don't I don't know if it's like or if you sign up. Okay, if it's I will literally message Doug yeah, Sifu right, right now, now and be mar- like, I want season C. No, they're no. marketing as renewal. So so but I don't know if you also get Dude, what if I will renewal. I will buy a seat with you guys. You wanna call Doug Sifu right now? No, we can't just call him. <laughs> Bullshit, we can't just call him. He's got a phone number and we have it. <laughs> Let's call Doug Sifu he right now phone number. and Why tell him, make him? me a bicycle clown. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, yeah, would, I would buy it, literally. I would you. buy a seat, and then we could just give any any people in the Florida area who want to go to a game any on the road. Listeners. One person, yeah. We'll Tickets to yours. Seat, yeah. Tickets to yours. <laughs> if if it's renewal though, that doesn't yeah we'll that doesn't work. Count, yeah. Uh, Let's find out. March. 3rd. If you have season seats but you don't have the funds, we'll pay for the renewal. That's also good. Only if you win the raffle prize. <laughs> <laughs> I want Only your raffle prize. Only if we get the helicopter ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll pay for the renewal, but if we win the helicopter ride, uh, we get to take the ride, and you get to stand there underneath the helicopter, looking sad. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, March, and you have to look disappointed, even if you're March third, you get a free trip to Las Vegas for the NHL awards. Uh, Yo. <laughs> the 6th, you get a behind-the-scenes press box experience. March 7th, you get a sweet night with $500 food credit. Sweet as an S U I T E. Or a sweet as an S-W-E-E-T. <laughs> no, sweet as in a box. Sweet. S-U-I-T. So, and $500 what? Uh, food credit. Whoa. So, you're basically throwing a party and yeah, they're, and they're catering a party. a party for you. And oh, my God. The March 8th. You get to fly anywhere in the U.S. for two, courtesy of JetBlue. Hawaii is part of the United States. <laughs> oh, I'd be going to Hawaii for sure. Be continental, it's, but they don't specify. Uh, Dude, Hawaii is expensive. If you yeah. Could, yeah, but you're right. Continental, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Probably would, uh, they would not take you to Hawaii. That's like, isn't that like a two thousand dollar flight from here? It's more than the cost of your tickets. Didn't I win the prize? Fly me to Hawaii, clown. <laughs> I will get Doug on the phone. Four tickets to any upcoming concert at the arena. Four tickets? Dog. Four tickets. Dog. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You can see the Beyonce. More than your season tickets. Oh, the Taylor yeah. Swift show? You can uh, just... Beyonce might be a while. Rihanna. What are the biggest what are the biggest Bruno shows? Mars. Bruno Mars. You biggest. can see whoever the hell Bruno, you want. Bruno Mars would be the four biggest. Tickets. I would see Flo Rida in Florida. <laughs> I don't care that I'm not a fan of his Flo music. Flo Rida in Pitbull. I would love to go to his house. <laughs> This I would like to go what? to near Miami where the players play. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, get it? Oh dear, because the players oh. play in the arena, oh, oh, and that pit bull oh, had a no, welcome to Miami no, where the no, players play. This is just you can't. <laughs> and I would tent. stand for the anthem, the pit bull anthem with oh, little oh, John. Adam. Oh, oh what are you doing? Oh, we got a lot more to go. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Which hotel, motel, Holiday Inn would they put you up at? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you get a deep sea fishing excursion for four in South Florida. You get to go underwater. That's you get to live where the fish live for a bit. They can't. They won't. They never will stop the party. <laughs> I, I am. I can't keep up. You're running laps around me, and it's unfair. I'm I am the tired old dog at the park, and you're just a scampy little puppy. I'm running. Iggy. I'm Iggy right now. You are Iggy, and I'm my neighbor's dog Kramer, and you are picking on me. I'm just a nine year old golden retriever trying to chill, and you're just being a dick. Not even necessarily at me, just around me, just around. You're just making, you're just moving, and it's bugging me. Can we call Doug Sivo up and just be like, how do you make money? Like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand the Panthers. They make money on the stock market. That's how they make but money. But how do the Panthers make money? I don't think they I care. I don't think they do. I think they want to win a cup and, yeah. and, and, and say, hey, I have a Stanley Cup winning team in my portfolio. Yeah. We need to actually make moves the second we're done recording. And make this happen. I'm not kidding. I if if we find out that it's not just renewal, if it's mm-hmm. buying, yeah, no dragging our feet it. like last time. I am getting I mean, fucking tr- Panthers. I will transfer ten, you guys the money. Ten days left. Okay, you get exclusive post game meet and greet with Panthers players. Amazing, James. Done. The fourteenth, you get a trip for two to the NHL draft. Which Chicago, Chicago. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Uh, the fifteenth, five hundred dollars in Pantherland shopping spree. So I assume that's like their store, Rhyme jerseys Jersey. and that sort of thing. Um, get another figure. On the 16th, you get 25 tickets for a party on the Florida Panthers bus. <gasps> what? <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, no, no, do you get 25 tickets to the game or just the bus? Just the, the, you get 25 group tickets 
for party on the Florida Panthers bus. I don't know if you got tickets to the game. As so well. they just drive you around and you party on the but bus. I assume they got a, they got a par- Panthers Yo, party bus. Party bus and you what got is up tickets. in Miami? Miami party bus. Like, cause they're not they're not taking you around Sunrise. They're taking you to Miami yeah. the party bus, right? Yeah. That or they're they're like we're taking you to Chili's. <laughs> March get 17th. ready for the ribs. It's Applebee's time. Seventeen's <laughs> pretty cool. You get one year of free beer, just like not at the game. That pays just for itself. Free beer. Oh, just free beer. Just until- free beer from this beer company. What's the beer company? No, you know the what? The logo's really tiny. Yeah, we don't have the tickets yet. Yeah, no, no, no they don't get advertising on the show. Um, on the five left. You get to host your own away game watch party at this restaurant. Okay. Um, on the 21st. Which, I mean, I guess would be food and drinks. And depending on how many people, that would also pay for the ticket. You, you gotta imagine. You, you get a $500 people. credit for your party. Woo! So you get, to, you get the restaurant for the night and then a $500 credit. You get the full credit. restaurant. Yeah. yeah, and then you get a $500 credit. I am definitely getting a cake that looks like me. <laughs> for sure. For sure. The 21st. And James. A South Florida staycation for two with free golf. Does that uh, mean in like a hotel? Like a staycation? I a South Florida Let's staycation. Take, sorry, we're going to make you take time off work. Also, here's some golf passes. <laughs> yeah. I think they give you a hotel, right? Yeah. Is the Sham Wow guy out of jail yet? We need to get him to read these things <laughs> on our podcast. Um, $500 cats. Cats cash credit. So I assume that's also. Is that like one of those fast money places? No, no. no that's it's their Florida Panthers. Cats cash. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm going to save the second last day. Because I think it's the very special. The best one? Okay. The last day, you get a road trip experience with the Florida Panthers. So what's that include? I don't know. It doesn't specify. James Reimer reads me stories but on the bus. On the 23rd, <laughs> Better. the prize is a one-day contract <laughs> with the Florida Panthers. No! What? Wow! Oh, we have to do this. Wow! We have to do this. We have to. You get Doug. to say you played in the NHL Yo, if you just Doug. renew your $600 season tickets. Can you Doug. imagine? What the fuck? Doug. Do you think Doug would sign us all to a one-year contract? Or Doug, a one-day one, contract? One, dude, how expensive would it be to just buy season just seats go- for this already going on year <laughs> and then renew them <laughs> oh, so yeah. that we can take part in this? We have 10 days. That's like <laughs> three podcasts from now. This is very happening. <laughs> so that would cost the us new season seat holders of the Florida fucking Panthers. No, we would only get one seat, right? We just buy the it, one. It's chair. a one day contract with the team, so I assume whoever bought the season to whoever owns it would get that contract. That is so cool. Yeah, and if they're winning by four That's... goals, guess who's back up with seven <laughs> seconds to go? Would you get to take warm up with them? I don't. I don't know. I hope. so I hope you at least get to dress and go on, on the warm up. Do the skate of the. Oh, oh my on. god. <laughs> You'd be in the NHLPA for a day. I get to take a shot on James Reimer and he lets me score because I'm a sweetheart. Would I get to play, would I have to pay ask He's a sweetheart too. If they win the cup, do you get your name on it? Do you get to be in the history books that you played on the Stanley Cup winning team? Well, do no, I get a ring? You got to play 25 games. Sadly. Listen. Yeah, but they can give rings to whoever they want. Yo, imagine getting a $25,000 Stanley Cup ring for not even, it's like 200 and something dollars. <laughs> Do they pay how would we? Employees? How would we split that ring? We couldn't. It would tear the show apart. No, we let's just, not do this. No, we would. We would hold it and 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 keep it and have it in the back of our new studio, our brand new studio. And we'd be our Florida oh, Panthers Stanley. Cup I would ring. have it made into a grill. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Paul Wall. Yeah. Oh my God, guys. We can't afford not to do this. I know. But wait, there's <laughs> more. But wait, there's more. I, I honestly think that... So that's the 30 days of giveaways that if you renew your season tickets. And my birthday is in less than a month. I will make the money that I spend on this back in Tim Hortons alone. <laughs> we are doing this. Well, yeah. Exclusively for fans and accounts renewing their season tickets. So we would have to get tickets for this season and then renew That still financially might make a lot of sense. Yeah. (laughs) That's still like $1,200? $1,300? Yeah. That's what it would be. Here's some of the details on the the one-day contract. Um, You get to watch Morning Skate, participate in Chalk Talk, 
with hockey operations, interact with Panthers players, and learn what it's like to be a Panthers player on game day. So I don't know what that entails. <sighs> but you get to you get a contract with the Florida Panthers. <sighs> Guys, why are we still recording? <laughs> I know. What, what, why haven't we left yet? <laughs> Let's fucking do this right also, now. Also, <laughs> anybody who renews gets 3% back in cat's cash. So, <laughs> so we can buy you that James Reimer jersey <laughs> that you've always wanted. So if you renew, yeah. 3% is just thrown back to you in food and tickets and beverages vouchers. I, I, you know what would be great, too? I would add that to my Twitter bio. I'd be like, Leafs fan, Florida Panthers season ticket holder. <laughs> host of, yeah, host of Kiss, SDP. Uh, and, and on that one day, <laughs> Leafs fan, Florida Panthers season seed holder, actual Florida Panther. <laughs> <laughs> actual Florida Panther. <laughs> That's right. I am an AFP for the day. <laughs> Steve Dangle, actual Florida Panther. You know what? We might we might have enough cash in the um, in the savings to pull this off. Oh, yeah, I think we do. What if you also get a Flander, uh, Florida Panthers Adidas jacket? And this is uh, the, the players' jacket. They say it's in a in the style wait, 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 of the players. You get that with the it's just anybody who signs up for a season of tickets, you get a players' jacket. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> turn it off. Turn it all off right now. We're doing this. Imagine Adam gets the contract, and for just one day, the Florida Panthers are the Wildcats. Oh, wow. Wow. Steve, I don't know if I could rightly... Like, if, if we if we buy the seat together, I don't know if there's a way... If we get the one-day contract, how could we not give it to you? Yeah. How could we not give it to you? Because we could just as easily give it to Jesse. No, it'd be... Steve. No, dude. Yeah, it would be you. It. it would have to be you. Oh, my God. But you, you, have to you know how obnoxious that would be? Reimer would be like, hey, what are you doing here? I'd be like... <laughs> oh. Playing Mitch! I, I, no, I'd just be like, oh, you know, just hanging out. <laughs> Teammate. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little shoulder tap. Teammate, how you doing there, teammate? <laughs> oh my god! You get to play for the Panthers. <laughs> we'll walk around the, the dressing room, just stepping all over the logo. Like, what's the strategy today, teammates? <laughs> uh. Anyways, Tom wrote, "Hey, what's up there, coach?" Oh uh, wow! So I want to be so eligible, bad. just renew your ticket by five p.m. each day of the giveaway. Florida Panthers season ticket holders, if you're listening. Do I, do I call him Mr. Talon or Boss? <laughs> Sir. Mm. Sir Talon. How many, how many season ticket holders do, you think, do we think they have? Like, what are your odds of winning one of these prizes? I am one in 30. <laughs> well, there's 30 of them, so it would be 30 in whatever. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. So 30 in like 1,000 maybe of them? Yeah, I think I've no, got to have like 5,000, right? Yeah, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5K. Yeah. It's pretty good odds to get a helicopter ride. Better than the lottery. <laughs> and and at the end of the day, worst case scenario, you have Florida Panthers tickets, and we'll just give. If you're in Florida and you can drive to the game, we'll give you the ticket. Yeah, we'll like put them at the box office and just pick them up in your, under your name. Yeah, the official every game. podcast yeah. of the Florida every Panthers. game. No, but we would do that every game. Just, and hey, and, and today's winner of Florida Panther ticket. And it's just, <laughs> yo, we should get like official posters done, and it's just us decked out in Leafs gear. Official podcast. Of Florida Panthers. <laughs> Uh, for, no, official podcast of Section 302, oh, Row K. Oh, oh. <laughs> Why? You know what? Ten minutes has passed before, or since I said, let's stop recording and do this right well, we away. We gotta finish the press conference. How I'm much sure to buy the team? Th- there's our first press conference question. Forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is just, the team one of the giveaways? I just want you to, uh, <laughs> I just want you to know that apparently, uh, Sean Spicer just referred to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau as Joe Trudeau. <coughs> no, <laughs> apparently so. So that'll be an internet thing. I'm sure he probably just flubbed the name. We're not gonna. Okay. I just wanted to. Throw How flustered there. must he be? Oh god! Every single That's mistake. That's probably why he did it. Anyway, every um, single um, mistake is going to be Melissa McCarthy going. All right. <laughs> So we got this Jake Plumo here, the leader of Canada, <laughs> chewing a novelty stick of gum. Of course. Steve might become a Florida Panther for one day. But, Steve, did you know that we have a Hall of Famer on our show? Oh, God. <laughs> I did. 
I think we should congratulate Adam for becoming a Humber Hall of Fame member. Thanks, guys. I mean, it's so cool. I, it, it is, is cool. so cool. Yeah, I mean, cool. Adam, when you look back at all your time at, that you spent at Humber, I mean, I mean, like, what's your favorite memory? <laughs> I was there for a full two semesters. Okay, <laughs> two semesters. Of four. I was. Uh, wow, I was oh, lying. Okay. I, I told Mrs. Dangle so it was only con- one two year deal. Okay, two year contract. Two year contract. <laughs> two year. <laughs> they signed. They oh, paid him to go. Yeah, it's a hell of a scholarship. I think that's cool, though. It is cool. So yeah, for anybody that doesn't know, I was in, inducted into the, just announced yesterday, I got off the plane, someone was like, hey, congratulations! I'm like, for what? And they sent me this uh, thing, and uh, my college that I went to radio school at uh, uh, inducted me into the Hall of Fame there. Also included on that list is like, uh, George Strombolopoulos is on that, uh, he's already on in the Hall of Fame. Oh, I was about yeah, to say. Yeah, there's from our station, Maury Sherman. Uh, and a few other people, Ryan Doyle, who works at uh, 1010 here in Toronto, and Amber Pay, who I knew as an intern and grew up with. She did traffic at Chum FM, uh, is now at CP24 here locally. But all those Hall of Famers that you just mentioned, did any of them get their suit complimented by Rick Ross over the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> or they don't know that they get didn't. Celine Dion to do a little funky dance. Yeah, yeah that. that all happened this weekend. Adam, so I was retweeting that. Like just to remind everyone, like Adam is famous. No, everybody, a that's, big deal. That's Adam is famous. It's not, no, I, just because I talk to someone that's famous doesn't make me yeah, famous. so yeah, famous. Yeah, nah. I Ellen mean, DeGeneres is famous. All right, yeah, so but, is that's, Adam but she's also a comedian and has been in movies and had. Adam a sitcom. is also a podcast host. And a Hall of Famer. <laughs> that, well, and which, a breakfast. Hey, by the way, we, we could submit our show for best spoken word program next year because that counts. <laughs> We should submit to the Grammys every year just to see what happens. Grammy Award winner, Florida Panther, (laughs) podcast host, (laughs) blogger. I want it all. We we could we could no it's done like we're we'll submit to the Grammys next year because you can I realized it was there was best comedy album I'm like well only there was only two nominees no three at least Uh, there was Schumer Margaret Cho. Uh, Patton Oswalt, who ended up winning, and I think there was a couple others, oh, and okay. and there's best spoken word for uh, like books too. Mm. So like whoever did the best spoken uh, like audio book. So we could probably not do audio book, but we could say comedy album. Yeah, and we could just do a best of clip show, and that's our comedy. If we have album. to release it somehow, we could do that. We as just well. independently put that on I- iTunes. You yeah. can do that. Yeah, hundred percent. Let's freaking do that. Yeah, it's done. Yo, submit to the Grammys <laughs> next year, dog. I want to win a Grammy or <laughs> and be at the very <laughs> least a Juno. <laughs> <laughs> we could submit to the Junos. It's what the done. Hell? Like this is being done. <laughs> Juno <laughs> winner, <laughs> Grammy nominee. Florida Panther. <laughs> and winner of 14 raffles out of 41. I'm blog DO's top 10 <laughs> blogs in Toronto. The 50 50 drop because oh, of the free t- Dude, <laughs> one, just one win. One win. And you're set. Oh. Uh, Adam. Yeah. Uh, I have your Instagram pulled up okay. because I have all oh. the famous people you spoke to, just in case you forget them. So here's Adam just yucking it up with Celine Dion. You Best got, selling Canadian of all time. Just saying. You That's got, it for our American listeners who may not understand the context of Celine. You got Chance the Rapper, who wasn't talking to anybody. No. Right? How no, many he, Grammys did he win? Three of seven. Three, seven noms. So he's wearing a hat. With the number three on it, well, that's, that's that's for his uh, his album. Oh, so that's okay, that's cool. just kind of awesome. Yeah. That's, okay, that's that's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he wasn't talking to anybody. But you know what? I'll tell you the the reason we got such big names is that our our chase producer slash wrangler Terry Hart, who was absolutely she is like she's one of those people that if she heard heard the word no, it would never phase her. If if someone like yelled at her on the street like for crossing at the wrong time, she'd be like. Like she just wouldn't care. She's the she's the Philadelphia attitude. What are you nuts? Oh like yeah, she's yeah, got yeah. that. She just has that. I don't give a shit. I'm going for this. In order to get uh, people at events like this, you got to be super pushy. I got my I got my super super tame taste of this at the Hockey Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Like oh. actually at the actual Hall of Fame a couple years ago, you have no choice but to be rude. Like you need to literally step in front of people, get do, in their way, and be like, "Excuse me, Carpet may I speak to you?" Yeah, they do. They do, and I like I had to, I like physically grabbed Scotty but Bowman. Do they like do they do it on Sportsnet? Do they do a live uh, broadcast? Because they should. No. That I don't know. I don't no. think Sportsnet has the rights to it. I think it's someone yeah. else. Oh really? I think it's someone else. Oh okay. Um, how was CeeLo in his gold costume? Go- See, he actually ran up to us. It didn't make the broadcast, but he ran up to our booth, grabbed my microphone, and went, 
and then left. And I didn't know. I should have at the time known it was CeeLo, but he came up oh, so quickly. Well. <laughs> Instead of fucking gold costume, yeah, how do you know it's it. It was just yeah. So so it, because of that mask that he had on, he couldn't actually move his lips. So and then apparently, as soon as the red carpet was done, he got in a car and left. Like he didn't stay for the Grammys. He just wanted to walk the carpet. Well, because CeeLo was on a mission to get all of that crap to be the first thing that comes up when you Google CeeLo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which is smart. And, well, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Stunting. On, a, on account of uh, he uh, has had a pretty sketch couple years. Man, you talked to designer. Mm-hmm. And his mom. You talked to designer's mom? Yeah. That didn't Mrs. Make, designer? That didn't make the broadcast also because, like, that's how many names we had. But, it, yeah, so his mom was standing in the background. I'm like, who's this? He's like, oh, that's my mom. I'm like, come on up. Like, let's talk. And she... She was almost in tears with how excited she was for him because he he was nominated, and uh, I think it was for best rap, either best rap song or best rap performance, because uh, it's it's hard to hard to know. There's so yeah, many different yeah. categories. I mean, Panda was pretty big. It was huge. I think it was performance. It was performance. Yeah, yeah. and he is such a nice guy, mm-hmm. and but genuinely smiles. And I I asked her, I'm like, is has he? Has he always been this guy? Like, and she's like, when he was like one, he started jumping over his baby bottle, and we we're like, what is up with this? What does kid? tired so designer cool. look like? I don't doesn't know. Exist. Man, doesn't exist. Rick Ross. Uh, what What were you wearing, Adam? I was wearing a suit uh, from Ted Baker with a bunch of weed leaves on it that looked like a bunch of weed leaves. Yeah, but it was like a pattern that was black into black, like shiny. And the, and we were. Yeah. I was wondering if it was going to show up on TV or not. It did. And I'll be honest, Jessica, who styles myself and styles Faisal and styles all the Sportsnet guys. Oh well, there um, you go. She picked it. Uh, and I was like, wow, this is a great suit. Hmm. So, like, I can't take credit it's for that because I have no fashion nice. sense. Steve Aoki. Yeah, who was really cool. Really uh, cool. That was funny because you're like, oh, you're nominated. And you caught him right after he lost. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, yeah, and I just lost. But a lot of them don't happen on the on the actual broadcast, right? Majority of like a handful happened on the show. Exactly, because yeah. no one cares. This so, really, well, they care. <laughs> they care, but they care more about the performances. So were you in the arena watching? That was the thing. Uh, so last year we were. This year we did not get to go. But I actually Where? preferred to go back to the hotel and watch it there. Because the best seats you're going to get are the ones at home. The, the thing with the Grammys is because there is so many performances going on, the stage is really divided up into about three sections. And so they go kind of one, two, three, two, three, one, like all it the time. It seems like it might not actually be that fun to go to. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, but there is a lot of downtime. It's a made yeah. for TV event. Totally. That's kind of yeah. what I'm saying. So yeah. so, yeah, I mean, it is still fun and I would still recommend it. And people in LA must be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just another one of our local events, right? <laughs> like whatever. Uh, but it is cool to go to and I would recommend it at least once. But I don't think you are, you're, you're seeing a lot more and you're seeing a lot more close up if you're watching on TV. Mm. Dude, Blink-182. Mm-hmm. How are that, they? Quiet. Quiet. Oh. I started with, I, I, I think I insulted them and I, and I don't, I don't think I meant to, but I said, I'm like, this is your first Grammy nomination ever. How is that possible? And they were, and and Mark was a little iffy about that, and Travis was a little if it was. Oh, did um, he maybe not? Uh, do, do they maybe misinterpret it? I yeah. think so. And Matt Skiba, who's the new guy, uh, who has come in and done an incredible job. If you're a Blink fan, um, he was the most talkative. But um, but like that was talking about their song San Diego, which talks about um, uh, talks about like their beginnings and um and you know one of the guys leaving and you know the issues that they kind of went through is very personal song and i tried to get them into that they just weren't they weren't playing the way i i wish and i wonder if it was the same if it was the first question they just threw did you them. bring up your podcast i did bring up what's the drummer's name again travis barker it is travis okay man nice he dude. looks like he wants to fucking kill you <laughs> They all do. I, 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 it's like they all had glasses on, and I could tell when they were answering my questions, they weren't looking at me in the eye because the they had light behind them. Which is, but that is a lot of people on the carpet. That's not. That's not just them, yeah. and it might, it might be just that they're quiet. Dude, yeah. Laver- Laverne Cox, super cool, super nice. Keith Urban, how was um the nicest? How's Q Tip and Busta? Uh, you interview Q Tip and Busta? I haven't yeah, even got to tried. that yet. Is that? Here's the thing. That, that picture's not even on here. You didn't even bother yeah. uploading that picture. No, there's, there's. It's up there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, nope, there it is. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so that that it was the last one. I believe didn't that interview is posted online. If you want to look it up, that is the interview I blew. I blew it with Busta. No, no, Busta. Oh, Blink. Busta saved my ass. No, it was. It was. I don't think Blink was great. There's certain. Listen, if you're gonna do anytime you're gonna do 25 interviews in an hour. Uh, Cause that's what it is. It's just like interview after interview after. Interview. You're gonna some of them. Yeah. You're just not gonna yeah. do great. You're at not some gonna of them. bat a thousand. If, if yeah, you play, don't a hockey go game, there expecting to be proud of yourself all the time. <laughs> if you play a hockey game, 
and you play for 60 minutes, chances are you're going to have a couple giveaways, yeah, right? A couple bad so shifts. There, so Tribe, I was so floored to be talking to them because they just popped up. I didn't even know they, they were there. performing. Yeah. Was that announced? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, well, um, but I was like, I didn't know how to lead because I really like Tribe and I really liked their new album, uh, which they performed one of the songs on it. And, and so I was asking them, they were, and I was, I think I led with a really weak question, to be honest. And I just, I, I asked like three, you know, when you don't know what to say. So you ask like three questions at once. Hmm? Uh, you know what I mean? I think that's what I did. And then I, I went to, at the end of the interview and this saved it. I asked Buster Rhymes. I said, talk about, if you can talk about what tribe means to, you know, hip hop and what it means to you. And he's like, well, and he is one of the most eloquent speakers I've ever spoken to, and I've spoken to him before. Guy uses words for a living. He he does, and you, I. But it, it almost shocks you. It's like he's po- poetic, and of course he's poetic. He's a rapper. Yeah. But it was such a beautiful sentiment, and a, and a, such a touching tribute that he gave to those guys. It saves the whole interview, and it's worth watching my shitty interview skills <laughs> to see Busta Rhymes at the end. He's so and that's a, awesome. That's a good example of when talk about is okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you just need he, to ah, grab onto something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you start with talk about, that's not necessarily great all the time. Mm-hmm. But if if you need it, it's there. And that was a legacy performance. Their album did well, but that mm-hmm. was a legacy performance, and yeah. and that's why I wanted him to kind that of awesome. mention that. Anyway, did was you bring w- up um, Fife Dog, or was that something? You should well, they they it? kind of said rest in peace, Fife, and oh, okay. and I figured they would. Mm-hmm. Um, like, how do you how do you ask a question like that? Right? It's like so. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fife just died. How do you feel? Like, you know, that's, that's not, it's tough to, it's tough to go after that. Although that's the answer you want. And you knew that they were going to bring it there at some point. Mm -hmm. Not not to make the worst comparison ever, but, um, I still remember the reporter who, I don't remember who the reporter was, who asked Ole Jokinen after Ole Jokinen cut uh, Richard Zednick's neck with his skate. He basically goes, how do you feel? Ooh. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> question. How do I feel? And I want Jokin, to know the answer. Jokin responded, what the fuck kind of a question is that? <laughs> and that was absolutely the right response. Yeah. I still want to know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. But, well, yeah, but there's different ways to ask it. Yeah. How do you feel? Not, not how so do you feel. So you slashed your friend's neck. How do you feel? Yeah. Uh, maybe not the best question to ask. So the reason I brought up all those names was not just to showcase you. I want to know how many of those people knew who you were. Because I'm willing to bet it was at least one. Steve Aoko probably knows who you nope. are. No, nope. I've never met Steve before. Celine? Uh, Celine had no idea who I Come was. Come on! Celine Dion's not going to know who I am. Who the hell? Who the hell? First you off, are a Canadian. You're a French Canadian star. Nobody. Icon. I don't think anybody Icon. did, uh, except for, and this made the broadcast, which was interesting. Keith Urban started our, our interview with, oh, I remember Adam. Oh, that's and great. That's cool. now, he was I, one of your first guys, too. Yes, I watched, and I I, I interviewed Keith before the start of Ripcord when he was embarking on the world tour and stuff. Ripcord is his, his latest album, which he was nominated twice for, and he um, he was so cool. And anybody that meets Keith Urban is going to tell you the same thing. Keith Urban's the freaking man. He's so awesome. Um, and so I, I couldn't believe that he said that, but I also wonder if that wasn't Keith Urban just being charming. Yeah. And you know what? I don't blame but. him. He, it he, worked. he talked he to someone. Remembered you. I talked to someone so. off camera. What's this loser's name? Yeah, Adam. Okay. Oh, I remember. I Adam. remember Adam. Yeah, like, I, like hell you do. You've had forty thousand interviews. Come on, Keith Urban. Never really. Know. But Never you know, know, can I tell you? Some people have crazy memories like that. Pinball Clements. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if he did because yeah. he's a very smart guy. You yeah. can see the. You can see it in his eyes. Um, one one interview I do want to talk tell you guys about. Oh no, is where well, this did, didn't make the air either. Um, and I would say this on any platform, so I'm not hiding anything by saying it on this show. Mike Posner, who uh, came in with green hair, looked like the Joker. I'm like, okay, so he's trying to make a, a scene tonight. Like, he wants to be noticed. Mike po- no. Uh, I took a pill in Ibiza. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he also had Cooler Than Me about seven years ago. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Mike Posner, if you missed the clips from E! Because uh, E! News was there, and they were going live with all their interviews. Some of ours were taped. Some of them were not. Um... And that's just because you want to make sure that you get the right interviews on the air, right? And some people come before your broadcast starts, so you got to tape them. So I, we were talking to Mike, and it was not live, thankfully. And he had a friend with him. Were any of them live? Yeah, some of them were. Some oh, of them Jesus. Were. Wow. Um, so Mike was with uh, this person that I've never heard of before, and I forget what he called him on the carpet. And he kept saying, for the, he starts the interview with, I'm like, hey, Mike, how you doing? And he goes, mansion. And he puts his fingers in an M. Mansion. 
And I'm like, okay. I'm like, wow, so it's been a great year for you. Obviously, you know, you have a, an acoustic song that's grabbed by a DJ. They remix it and worldwide number one hit. Pretty incredible. And he's like, actually, it's really cool to be. What's really cool is standing beside and then whoever his friend was in suspenders next oh, to him. Oh, no. And I said, okay. And so, I, so I'm like, okay, fine. If you're going to talk through this guy, I'll go to this guy. So I said, let's talk a little bit about Mike and how great he's been and, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this, guy's, this guy actually broke character for a minute and said, you know what? He has had a really great year. Uh, and he and and then reverted back because Mike pulled him back in and and they got it got to the point where these two and, and they were talking to each other. And this is over the course of like 30 seconds. And Mike kisses this guy on the cheek. And I guess with the E! News broadcast, Mike wouldn't talk directly to them. He was talking through this guy. So he'd whisper into this guy's ear. This guy would talk to E! News. Just trying so, to be trying then, to be weird. Yeah. yeah and then so for, and then he was trying like, to be intentionally like, oh, let's get people to go like, what's up with Mike Paulsner? Yes. And he kept going mansion mansion, which maybe is the new title of his album or whatever. Um, I have to tell you, I was so disappointed. Uh, I was so disappointed. Not Mike just because Posner. Who gives a shit? I had to ask you who he was. Exactly. Who gives a shit? Well, I'll tell you why. Because personally, I remember when Mike Posner was a college kid who wrote the song Cooler Than Me and recorded it in his bedroom on freaking GarageBand. And now he thinks he's cooler than you. But but dude, he was a nice guy from Michigan. Mm -hmm. He was Mm -hmm. such an... And he came onto the carpet and he made himself into a clown. Mm. He's a jack. That is a jackass move. I'm not saying Whoa. Mike's a jack. That's a jackass this move. This story doesn't surprise me because Jax, who's our midday girl at and the 95, awesome. interviewed Posner and he was calling her from a car and he was driving somewhere and he would give her one word answers for the entire. It was like three minutes she talked to her and only one word answers. And then at one point he handed the phone off to his friend who was just like, hello, and who didn't know what was happening, didn't know he was in the middle of an interview. And then they didn't even run the interview because there was nothing there because he was an asshole the entire time. How many? So I'm not surprised to hear that he's still an asshole. How many interviews have you torpedoed or are you com- comfortable saying? Like you got a big name. And you were like, we got this big name, but it's unusable, and you just didn't. Demi Lovato with Blake. Yeah, Yeah, Demi Lovato. We torpedoed it, and I feel like we've talked about this. We made her do it again. Yeah, made her do it again. The next day, we said, "I'm not." I said, "I'm not running that." So if they if they want us to have the interview, better hook it up again. She called us back. Now it that. Ne- wasn't necessarily Demi's fault because the the quality of the phone was terrible. It was technology, right? Um, but also, she was not having it that day. Yeah, uh, and mm-hmm. and I've interviewed Demi in person, and Demi is uh, guarded. Demi, well, she's guarded, Demi. and I, I don't blame her. She's been she's been dragged through the press a few times. I don't blame her for being guarded. Yeah. Uh, but at that point, yeah, we torpedoed that interview. I don't think I ever ran my Justin Bieber interview um, because he w- he didn't give a shit. Um, and see some some hosts would have gone with that. I got Justin Bieber, and he was an asshole. And they would have spent Maybe. the entire show being like, "He was an asshole." You don't but you were just like someone. Uh, some people do. <sighs> yeah, and it, Adam didn't need to though. Well, yeah. And what what do you have to gain? Right, you're the guy that ripped some Justin people Bieber. Would do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Some, some people definitely. And you know what? It. It's entertaining. Yeah. It is entertaining. I, I don't blame anybody for doing that. I Dude. and I have ripped people before, and I'm ripping Mike Posner now. But Mike. Mike needs to get something straight in his mm. head. He is really, really lucky to be back. He is really, really lucky to be where he is. Is Mike Posner a very good songwriter? Absolutely. This guy wrote Boyfriend for Justin Bieber, and oh, wow. the scuttlebutt in the industry is that he didn't write it for Justin Bieber. He wrote it for himself. Bieber's people wanted it and wrestled it away from him. Because originally when that song came out, it was Bieber featuring Mike Posner, mm-hmm. and then they just dropped the Mike Posner part. Because Bieber's management is Bieber's management. There's a whole backstory to that too. But Mike is very anybody doing entertainment anywhere. I'm lucky to be an entertainment reporter. I'm lucky to have this podcast. I'm lucky to have a radio show. I am lucky to be there. Lucky to be and a Florida I, Panther. I, I'm lucky to be a future Florida future Panther. Future Florida Panther. <laughs> I'm lucky to do this. Yeah. And so I, I'm not saying you have to be the Kardashians about it when you play the game, mm. but you have to show up. You have to show up. Do you think maybe he was just going for something that bombed or he was being a dick? I think he was. I, I think maybe. I don't know, Jesse. What you do you don't think? show up in green hair with the expectations that you're going to be a great interview. Maybe. Maybe. But maybe. like even the well, South I mean, Park guys. Pilots did. But they yeah. didn't do any interviews. Even the South Park guys showed up to the Oscars high on acid and 
dresses and they made it funny because no matter what they were asked they were just like magical night tonight you know just, uh, but just they made all, all the stars yeah. are out but yeah, Mike, so what's up with your dresses it's just oh my goodness there's so many were, stars but they were can't miss television Mike yeah. Posner was let's miss this because who cares mm-hmm. well That's yeah it, it was literally miss television was because miss you didn't television. put it on yeah. Why? because you had bigger names and you know what when Celine Dion can make time yeah. When Keith Urban can make time, when Carrie Underwood can make time, when Chance the Rapper, you, oh, you got Carrie Underwood too. I forgot about that. Absolutely. When they Jeez. can make time and they can show up and go, and Chance the Rapper hates interviews, hates them. Yeah. But he did it, and he came and he gave us a great minute and a half. And when Rick Ross can st- sit there and have a conversation with you and is amazing about, I think it. he likes the camera though. Well, so what? But if, Rick Ross, like Adam said, if oh, Celine Dion, oh, I see what you're if Celine Dion can play the game for a minute, and she's got Adam, nothing to promote, why? Nothing. Why can't Mike Poster? Why was she even there? She just was presenting. Oh, oh, yeah. that's right. Why can't Mike Poster? Well, there you go. And that's so. I was so disappointed because the Mike Posner I initially met was a really great guy, and it's a shame to see what's happened. It's a real shame. Wow, you got you got datum on him. It's just disappointing. Damn, he's not even mad. He's just disappointed. <laughs> ah! Mike Posner needs fine. to call you up and apologize. He'll be fine. He's a good writer. Yep. But it's disappointing. He probably has enough money. Yep. He needs to call you up and apologize, and Doug Sifu needs to call us up and give us Florida Panthers season seats for this year and next. That's what needs to <laughs> well, happen. I, I feel bad for E! News. I feel bad for Juliana Rancic, who actually had to go live with him and, and juggle this. Because that's, that's, that she's, was live? She is a hardworking person who. Uh, who has earned every freaking inch that she's got, and it is not easy to make it down there, man. Ooh. That is not an easy gig to hold down, to get, to deal with. Um, well, on Canadian and, TV, man, like, well, she's, there's just not that many spots. Well, no, but Juliana Rancic is American. Is American. Oh, that's Amer- oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah. E! News America. Because there's oh, E! News Canada, too. I was confusing. Do you have any sorry. conversations with people like doing what you're doing except down the street? Like, do you have a conversation uh, with I, I met a guy named Chris Wolf from, uh, from KTLA. It was a really nice guy, but that was the night before. When you're there and you're on that carpet, you're so um, it's so busy. I think the camera might have shot. It's no, so it's still going. oh, it's no. still going. It's so busy that you don't have time. But when they're when it's the less um, when it's the less intense red carpets when you're not doing a live show. Mm-hmm. So the Clive Davis party, which is always the night before, which a ton of people show up to, um, or Music Care is where they honor like you know this year they honored Tom Petty. So Stevie Nicks was there, and you know all these huge huge names that were friends with Tom Petty. Um, those those times, yeah, you can you can get because those carpets are four or five hours long, mm. and it's funny when you Jeez. do when you do the Grammy red carpets, it's you're there at, on the carpet at 11 a.m. The broadcast doesn't start till four. So you're just hanging around, hanging around. Oh wow! Now, do you no have... bathroom breaks? You have some food, but you do not drink water because <sighs> uh, I mean there yeah. are porta potties. But what if you leave and you miss something? A hundred percent. I was terrified to leave, and again, it's such a much smaller scale. But uh, the Hockey Hall of Fame. Oh no! You it's actually not a small can't scale. leave. No. no, and even if you don't miss anybody, you're gonna lose your spot. Now, did you have a hard carved out spot? You have to have spot? a hard spot. Yeah, it's a television broadcast. So it was carved right? out. And because there's there's too much equipment. In involved. every case, in every case, like if we're the Canadian provider for the Grammys, they're gonna give us spots. They yeah. have to, right? And they have to for order's sake have to do that. I, uh, I know. So I know we for, didn't the, have that. for the for the MMVAs here. Elbows up. See, that's BS. The MMVAs here do that it's too sometimes. Yeah. You need. It's not a scrum. You need to have ordered spots. Even TIFF, which gives you about six inches. Uh, we actually had to make deals at Toronto International Film Festival with Access Hollywood and Entertainment Tonight with their reporters. So when, for our particular carpet, it was Matthew McConaughey, Scarlett Johansson, Jennifer Hudson, Reese Witherspoon, people coming in. You have to, um, they they move forward, you move back. And then when it's your turn, they move back, uh-huh. you move forward. So that way you're not elbowing each other and getting each other's way. Uh-huh. And so you you work with each other. So that's when you get to know them. I heard a story once of, uh, I don't remember who the intern was, but uh, there was a Blue Jays scrum, I think. And, uh, and uh, you know, so the Fan 590, which is now Sportsnet Radio, is obviously a Rogers station. And uh, and uh, th- this guy, is he's trying to get in the scrum, trying to get in the scrum, can't find a way. James Sabolski, who at the time worked for TSN, took the intern's mic. And he's like, oh, oh shit, the guy from the competitor just... He just took my microphone. So Sabolski, in the middle of the scrum while holding his TSN flash, also holds Aww. the fan flash. That's what you do. That's, that's what you that's do. Sh- so 
same because I know it's co- competition, but it doesn't matter. Same, yeah. no, it doesn't. Same it carpet, doesn't doesn't same TIFF carpet last year, and or, or sorry, in September. Um, there was a guy from one of the major shows in the states in, for entertainment. Ryan Seacrest, not Ryan Seacrest. No, 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 no. Ryan doesn't do that. Ryan, Ryan does the e carpet where there's space and there whatever. Like Ryan, can not, you get within fifty meters? Of Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> I was uh, probably forty feet away. I didn't even see him. Right, like yeah. it was you. You just these. There's people. There's a wall of people. So for this particular carpet, again, it's the moving forward, moving back. A guy two people down, right? He uh, is a veteran reporter um, <laughs> and uh, and knows the game, knows how it works. Somet- no, knows better might be a better term. So what happens is sometimes when people are talking and you didn't get many questions in with the person you want, your camera will continue to do it and you hold your mic down so you're not in their shot. But you're there. Mm. But you're there, and you're still getting their audio. I, uh, which is fair. So I, yeah. Yep, and, I've been in this situation, and and that's fair. Yeah. Yes, that's fair. Yes, this guy didn't push the guys next to us out, but pushed my microphone out, and not just pushed it well, out, I physically pushed it, f- physically pushed my microphone out to the point where I almost dropped it on the other side, like almost went like dropped it on the floor, and I you slugged him in the face. I should have. And I should have yelled into his. I should have at that point just grabbed his you microphone have and, and yelled into it and, been, and said, <laughs> you should have pulled you, dude!" Yeah. Right in the middle of Scarlett Johansson's interview. I didn't, <laughs> but I will never forget that. That's mm-hmm. the thing because everybody works together, yeah. and you got this one guy, and there always is one jackass on the carpet who you're 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 not even disappointed. You're just mad. <laughs> one Mike Posner, mm-hmm. and guess what? <laughs> His question was the same damn question that I asked because we asked the same damn questions because yeah. we all want to know the same thing. <laughs> They're creating. Just broadcasting, you know? Oh, give me Like, how break. dare you get in the way of his broadcasting? We're all doing entertainment. This isn't hard-hitting news. And even the <laughs> yeah. hard-hitting news guys are like, yeah, you get your microphone in there, too. Yeah, sorry, not to stereotype, but Canadian or American? American. Yeah. But it's, most Americans are great. Yes. Most of them are amazing. Yes, 100%. And, but, I, and I would say the Canadian ones are a little snarly with each other. Really? That's smaller market. My experience has been the opposite. Mm. Okay. Interesting. That's especially when it when it came to baseball. Not that I had that much experience. I see. I would have thought the baseball reporters would be like, ah. "Oh yeah, oh, no, 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 that's what I'm saying. Oh. No, no, no." When the see, sorry, the New context. York, New York reporters. The fan employees got to interview the Blue Jays. The interns got to interview the road team. Ooh. Now, that no. When I was an intern, though, in like 2008, 2009. No, that's, you, you wanted to be interviewing no, no. the road team. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a scary thing. Oh, it's totally scary. But, but you know, some games, and it was funny. It was a seniority thing. So not all interns got to even do this. So I had to work my way up. But then you start off and you're getting like the the Oakland Athletics. And you're interviewing like Houston Street. And but like that's I, an interview you definitely did because that is not a name someone yeah, just pulls out of the air. Know that Houston Street <laughs> and also what a name. <laughs> what one time and then I, I can't remember what team he was on at the time. I want to say the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, Edinson Edin, Edison Volquez. Yes, he had a big booger on his nose. <laughs> but then one time I got the Red Sox because I'd been there long enough. Superstars. And another time and oh Red Sox. That's that. One game is go- going in the book. Ago. It's going in the book. That was an insane day. But the Yankees. It's it was the most American media I had ever seen to that point, hmm. and the Japanese media outnumbered them. Hideki Matsui. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus the Canadian media. So it was a full. It was like all the Canadian media that would have showed up to a Jays game, like. You know what I mean? It wasn't the same number as if the Oakland A's were in town. Mm-hmm. This was the Yankees for Canadian media. It was the most American media that I, I had ever seen. And then the Japanese media outnumbered that. And the visiting coach's office is smaller than this room that we're in right now. <laughs> and so we're all <laughs> friggin' jammed in there. I don't remember who the manager was at the time, but I had this big stupid Morantz box to oh. record with which and it we was, used to have to carry which were 10 pounds yeah. when you could have just recorded into an iPhone whoever the manager of the I don't know 2008 or 2009 Minnesota Twins was I accidentally held my mic into the speaker of the Morantz and it just he was in the middle of starting his press conference and it went <laughs> and, oh, and he no. just just looks up at me wide eyed and just goes well don't do that <laughs> and it just went 
okay. And I and like I'm trying to fight for space, but I'm also like holding my like I'm cartoonishly holding my mic and Morant's far away. No, for because I'm so terrified of it ever happening again. Listening to me talking about the Minnesota Twins in 2009, while Adam's like. Friggin' Carrie Underwood. Dude, you've interviewed... No, I know. I mean, come on. I'm glad we got Grammy time with Adam. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, you know that, right? Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I, think it was... It hasn't really sunk in. I there think that's go. what it is. I think that's what it is. But do you, yeah. you kind of not let it sink in? Because otherwise... People ask that or, or, you know, what did you think? Or did you go back and rewatch it? And the truth is, last year... Oh, don't do that. No, yeah, last year I, I, <laughs> no. I didn't watch... Like Caprice was like, wow, this is real. Like she, she wasn't sure how I would do, right? So she's like, wow, you surprised me. You did great last year, and I'd be like, not a great way to word it, but well, okay. no, no, uh, but like, she didn't mean I love it. Love you way. too. No, I know. <laughs> but it was yeah. like, you know, it was I. Not much was expected of me, other than I was the fourth guy on a team of four on the uh, on air, okay, okay, right, um, on the carpet, and so you know, she was she was really encouraging and whatever, and she said, you did great. You'll have to watch it back. I've taped it, and I've never watched it. And I can't. And then this year happens, and I was position one. So it was. So you go. You jump from that to that's that. A, that's, a, that's a big step up. And it was. It was. Um, it was an amazing opportunity, and I'm so grateful for it. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to watch it. And I. I'm. I. It sucks to know that that tribe interview is on is online because that's never going away. And that's clearly one of my worst interviews. Like I know I'm better than that, and I want redemption badly. So if they ever come to town, I'm gonna just chase them down and be like, dwell, "Give me another." Never dwell on an interview. I know. And I just it was a um, it was a swing miss. The way home lineup. Yeah, maybe so we they'll can, be in town. I will have if I can get time with them. That's the only interview I want. I don't even care who else is on the bill. That's who I want. And by the way, I will go to way home just to see them. Otherwise, no, not interested. Um, I got a story, but I'm gonna keep it. Are you? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. Why? I'll, you you'll you'll see. No 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 you'll see. But you'll this has see. been great story time. No 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 I can't do it. Anyway, no because it doesn't involve me. Oh right okay. That was a pretty cool weekend. It was a very cool weekend. Thank you everybody, and everybody then watched. It topped it off with Hall of Fame induction. Hall of Fame. <laughs> Faisal Faisal Kamisa messaged me. He's like, boy, you're having a shit week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was yeah. It's it's so it's, it's pretty cool. It's we were, cool. We were hanging out last proud. night. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Faisal and I were uh, hanging out last night, and he he saw the tweet that said that, and he's just like, this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh come man, from Faisal him. is saying that about you. Faisal. I know. I know. Faisal, yeah. Oh, Mister, I got a clothing line. <laughs> I'm incredible, and I'm handsome. <laughs> and oh, by the way, every suit color looks great on me because I'm Faisal. Yeah. Freaking Faisal. I'll he also come on the Hyperloop. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Unbelievable. Anyway, um, thank you for bringing that. I'm glad you guys brought up the Grammys because I'm sure there's more stories that I haven't even told that I can't remember right now because so much Grammy happens. Grammy time short, with Adam. Yeah. I'm sure we'll jump back into Grammy time with Adam at some other point too. And if Mike Poser's listening, sorry for dadding you, but not, a, not really. You need to be dadded. That'd be really cool if he was listening. Doubt it. He's cooler than that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake The Steve Dangle Podcast Brought to you by Panago Pizza Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness